I was chewing popcorn watching my favorite channel with my bestie Diana when I heard Juliana's screeching voice. Cheryl! Emergency! Help me! I dashed towards her room to see her struggling with clothes. Oh my dear, you're here. Come and help me choose which bag would suit my gown better. Gucci or Versace? Is this your emergency? Yes, absolute emergency. I must look fab on tonight's date. What? A date? Don't you remember you just cried your eyes out for some jerk yesterday? Can you believe her? <clears throat> Sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Cheryl, living in New York. And that's Juliana, my aunt. My parents passed away when I was little. Since then, Juliana moved in and became my guardian, as per their will. She was funny and expected to make good company in this huge house, but... Most of the time, she wasn't around. The only time she sat down with me was... I just bought him a brand new Bentley to walk his dog the other day, but the next day he immediately dumped me. He said he wanted to share my burden, but seeing how heavy my 20 carat diamond necklace is, he stole it and ran away. <laughs> my auntie always left with all her heart, only her taste in men really needs some fixing. As you can see, all gold diggers. But for some reason, she refused to see those red flags and still hooked on them like a crazy bull. And inevitably, <sighs> her long list of heartbroken stories keep getting longer and longer. Recently, Juliana met someone new and dined out every day. But you know how it's gonna end. <sighs> Once they steal something from her, they surely would run away and leave her inconsolable back to me. <sighs> Actually, I've once dated a guy like that. But of course, I'm not easy to deceive like Juliana. Once I sensed something fishy about that guy, I kicked him in his butt right away. That's why it's my first and also my only relationship I've been in. But no big deal. I have my bestie Diana. She might look timid, but really reliable. She knew everything about me. <laughs> then one day, Juliana asked me to join them for dinner. Wasn't this the first time she introduced her boyfriend to me? But this guy was kind of special? Or even strange to her usual style. Hmm. Juliana only ever dated six-pack guys. But now, what's this overweight, short, and bald man doing here? Auntie, are you alright? But the real bummer was he brought along his son, who also happened to be Andrew. My freaking gold digger ex! It all happened when I was 14. The age where everyone was in a relationship. <coughs> Except me and Diana. One day, my class gathered to play Kiss, Spin the Bottle, and on my turn, the bottle pointed to Andrew, the only boy in my class who was single at that time. Friends screamed in extreme excitement and started to push us together, and we kissed. Since then, my classmates started to ship us as a couple, until one time Andrew came to me. Hey, you don't have a boyfriend. I don't have a girlfriend. Why don't we become an item? Our friends seem to like it too. Stupid offer, right? But 14-year-old me thought it's a good idea to join the dating circle like my friends after all. I mean, being the only single girl really sucked. And he surely got a look and would make a good match with me. So I agreed. And we became official and did what other couples do from holding hands to public kissing. Andrew turned out to be a good acting partner. And it was quite fun, to be honest. Except for those moments where I wish I could just end his life. Bae, I'm hungry. Get me something. Ah. Uh... But he's still totally wrapped up in finishing his 10th burger. Until I nudged him that did he pay attention to his starving girlfriend. Aw, my bae is hungry. Then eat, my love. Ah. Uh... But what was it? I opened my eyes to find out he fed me his greasy finger. Ew! That definitely raised my hackles up. I stood up and gave him my tantrum, but he had the audacity to fight back. If Diana hadn't stopped me there, I swear I was going to give him some scratches. But still, we both had to settle down our first couple fight to continue our lovey-dovey girlfriend-boyfriend thing. Ugh. Things ran quite so smoothly that sometimes I thought I was in a real relationship. <laughs> Then one day, I was walking in the schoolyard to hear some boys talking. Hey, Andrew and Cheryl have been together for two months, right? Yeah, I can't believe our spin the ball trick that day could be that successful. Shout out to our handsome boy Andy who's willing to go into the lioness's den to help us earn some more allowance from our rich lady. Perfect. <laughs> and now the bait is taken, it's time to give Andrew the cue to action. What? So Andrew's offer only comes from an attempt of leeching onto me? How dare he? I immediately stormed away to find him, sit on a bench. Hi, bae. Why the long face? Who stole your food? <laughs> Drop your act. I know you're just a gold digger. What gibberish are you talking about? 
I don't know what's going on with you, but don't put it on me. He still had the guts to deny it and even dared to go berserk at me. We're over. Not long after, he moved to another city with his family. Good riddance. And from that moment, I said no to boys, as they only come to me for money. I didn't expect to see this jerk again, especially in this kind of situation. I dragged him outside. You have to stoop this low? Couldn't get my money, so now you asked your dad to steal from my aunt? Quit thinking everything has to spin around you just because you have some money. I just want my dad happy, and he seemed to like your aunt. I warn you, don't cause any trouble. The next morning, I woke up to the most shocking news ever. Cheryl, Mr. Hardy and I are engaged. The wedding is soon to be decided, and two families will move in together. What on earth? They've known each other for hardly two months, and now they're getting married? What? This Hardy guy must have put some kind of spell on Juliana. Wait, so Andrew the jerk, he's my cousin now? No, I can't let him rob me one more time. I so needed some bestie talk right now. But why is Diana clinging to Andrew? I rushed over without a second thought. Hey, what's going on here? Are you blind? We're seeing each other now. What kind of gibberish did I just hear? I dragged Diana away immediately. You better have a proper reason. I, I'm sorry. You know too well what kind of person he is. Why? Um, can you do me a favor? You and Andrew are living under the same roof now, but can you keep a distance from him? What? Are you for real? You know, I'm a bit insecure. Okay, fine. You worry for nothing anyway. In no scenario do I want to be near him. What's wrong with the people around me? Frustrated, I came home, but to see Andrew's dad in my house. We just moved back to the city, so it's taking more time for our housing contract to settle. So we'll have to live in your place, just for now. Is it okay? Of course, Bay. This castle is too big for the two of us anyway. Right, Cheryl? Yeah, how convenient for you, Mr. Hardy. Just move in, and all this house and cars are all yours to use now. And that's how Andrew and his dad entered my life and made it miserable. Every single night, he kept bothering me with a screeching sound that I couldn't stay focused on studying. Stop it, or I'm gonna throw away your flute. Pity you can't comprehend art, cousin. Not just that. I had to share a bathroom with him, which now rather turned into his own exhibition of Star Wars obsession from towels, doormats, or even toothbrushes. Literally everything. Ugh. He even left his stinky football jersey for days. Ew. And of course, I couldn't let Andrew Invasion continue like that. I draw the boundary to set my territory. Hey, that's not fair. You got an inch more. What? Obviously not. And you know where he got his annoying nature from? Yeah, you guessed that right. His dad one day brought a full box of tools and left them everywhere in my house. Then he dragged every old item out of the basement and got them fixed. Hey, this castle wasn't supposed to be his mechanic shop, and we have enough money to buy new stuff. One day I told Juliana my bed was too high and I wanted a new one. But Mr. Hardy was faster and insisted on fixing my bed. But when I lied on it, it collapsed immediately. Help, my butt! I just know it's his tactics to win Juliana's heart. And it seemed like it worked, as my aunt, who was never seen in the kitchen, now volunteered to show off her cooking skills. Wow, love's power, they say. Then let's see how love would burn. <laughs> I just happened to heat up their love by adding some super hot chili into Mr. Hardy's portion. And after the first bite, he ended up crying like a baby. Don't you know I have a peptic ulcer? Then he held his stomach and left the table. Juliana hurriedly followed him to their room, all looking concerned. New trick to wheedle some more gifts? Impressive. It's you, right? Me what? I ignored him and went back to my delicious sup, but this party pooper stole the dish and scoffed, like being left starving for decades. Okay, fine. If you insist, you just pushed all of my buttons, you moron. I snatched his dish and finished the steak in front of him, and I could see his eyes turned red in anger. And that's when the fork fight broke out between us, until the maids came in to prevent any more calamity. The next morning, I saw my aunt taking Mr. Hardy to the hospital. Oh, I didn't expect it to be that bad. Right then, a delivery man came. Oh my my, wasn't it Green Day? My favorite band of all time? But this vinyl was rare. Not everyone could have this. Who, who bought it? It's mine. You? Hey cousin, can you pay for me? I spent all my money on game yesterday. <laughs> <sighs> Classic. Fine, I'll pay. To make up for the prank yesterday. Okay, but with a condition. I'll unbox the vinyl. We return to the living room and open the vinyl. The cool guitar riffs and engaging lyrics gives me chills every time. When my jam was playing, I sang it out loud like usual. And notice Andrew did too. And just like that, we sang together until the song ended. And we started to talk about Green Day non-stop. American Idiot was the best album ever written. Fight me. No, Andrew Idiot. Dookie was the one that established their name. 
You call me idiot? Then you might listen to Dookie too much that turned you into a... Into... Cheryl Poopy as well. What? I'm Cheryl Cherry Bomb! Too much for spending time with this jerk this morning. His taste in music is okay, but his personality is definitely not. One day at school, while I was busy with my homework, suddenly a boy stormed in my place. Hey, beauty, I get a dare. Would you mind giving me a kiss? What? I very, very mind. Get off me. But he still leaned towards and trying to press his dry as the bark of a tree lips on mine. Hey, kid. Why are you here alone? What's your name? I first noticed this little girl when I discovered this epic pastry shop near my school. She'd always be sitting in the alleyway nearby, wearing the same clothes over and over again, clutching a teddy bear in her arms. She looked up at me with her big, innocent eyes and answered timidly, I... I'm Alex. Then she started crying quietly and said, My mom and dad are always working, so I wait for them here. Sometimes they're gone for days. Oh, this poor little girl. She must have been starving as she kept eyeing my bag of croissants. I gave her one, and she said chocolate croissants were her favorite. Wow, just like me. No wonder I'd felt drawn to this little girl. She ate it so fast, and I told her I'd go buy her another one, and I'd be right back. I couldn't bear to see her so hungry. How could her parents just leave her like that? I ran as fast as I could, but when I got back to the alleyway... She was gone. How weird. I couldn't see her anywhere. I walked home, and that night, I couldn't stop thinking about her. Had her parents come to pick her up? The next day, I went back to the pastry shop, and before I even got there, I heard some kids shouting. I tried to take a closer look, and there Alex was, huddled on the ground while the kids threw her teddy bear around. Oh no, she was crying. This made me so angry, so I charged towards them. Hey, leave her alone right now, or you'll have me to deal with. The bullies immediately ran off. I rushed over and put my arm around Alex. She wiped tears from her eyes and said, Thank you. Other than my teddy, you're the only one who wants to be my friend. I swear the lump in my throat couldn't get any bigger. Then I asked her what happened. She told me how she skipped school because she was bullied for wearing old, smelly clothes. Even the teachers were mean to her, she said. Oh gosh, my heart. I couldn't bear this, so I held out my hand. Alex, I can't leave you out here like this. I've always wanted a little sister. So what do you say? I promise I'll protect you. Alex squeezed my hand, which I took as a yes, and then we got up and she asked if she could show me something. It was a playground that she used to go to, and as soon as I saw it, I felt something well up inside me. It looked so familiar. We played on the jungle gym and the swings, and they even had a big slide that was so fun to play on. We played for hours, and it felt like I'd gone back in time to my childhood. Well, if only I could actually remember my childhood. As far as I know, when I was just eight years old, I had a big accident. It gave me a major head injury and wiped my memory completely. Ever since then, I've been going to therapy and taking medication. But it's so weird not being able to remember anything from before. I try to focus on the present, though, and I know I'm lucky to even be alive. However, sometimes the migraines from the accident get really bad, and that's exactly what happened when we were on the swings. One minute, I was looking at the clouds and laughing. The next, I felt myself slipping off the swing and landing on the ground. The last thing I saw was Alex running towards me. When I opened my eyes, I was in a hospital bed, and my parents were there holding my hands. Recently, my migraines had been getting more frequent, and it really worried my mom and dad. My first thought was, where's Alex? I asked my parents if they'd seen an eight-year-old girl, but they looked confused. I realized she'd probably been scared and run off. She was constantly on my mind, though, so as soon as I got out of the hospital a few days later, I went to find her again. She was nowhere to be seen. 
but there was a fire in my heart that kept urging me to find her, so I couldn't give up. I had to find her. I ran to the playground and was relieved to see her on the swings. She looked so sad, so I asked her what was up, and she burst into tears and she said, My family, they lost everything. A gang came to our house and stole everything we own. Even I started crying after hearing that. How could people be so cruel? She then told me she hadn't eaten for days, as her parents now had no money to buy her food. Luckily, I had just bought some chocolate croissants, and she gobbled them both. Meanwhile, my mind was cluttered with thoughts of helping Alex. My savings were barely enough to support her, but maybe my parents could help? They donated to a church in town, so I'm sure they'd be happy to help Alex. I quickly called my mom, and she said she'd love to meet Alex and see what they could do. So I happily told Alex the good news, and we walked straight to my house. I gave her some more food, and we sat on the couch to wait for my parents. Seeing her bright face made me feel so happy. As soon as I heard their car pull up, I ran to the door and said, Mom, Dad, Alex is here. My parents came in and looked around the room. Then my dad said, Um, sweetie, where is she? I pointed to the sofa and said, She was just there. Then I called her name but she didn't reply. I didn't get it. Where was she? My mom looked worried and said, Is she too shy? Are you sure she was with you, honey? I frantically checked the whole house, but she was nowhere to be found. I was starting to panic now, but my dad held me and said, Alice, sweetie, calm down. Maybe you just need a rest. Then I heard my mom whispering to him, the severe migraines probably have drained her out again. Get her upstairs. I'll call the doctor to ask about hallucinations. I'm not hallucinating! She's real! Why don't you believe me? I screamed out while trying to break away from my dad's arms. I was feeling dizzy by this point. My head was pounding, and the next moment, everything went dark again. I ended up in hospital again for the second time that week. Wow, that was a new record. I was lying there pretending to still be unconscious to eavesdrop on my parents chatting to the doctor. Alice has been acting a little strange. She keeps mentioning a homeless girl, and it sounds quite similar to her childhood. Today, she even said she brought her home to meet us, but we can't find her anywhere. And I don't think she even exists, my mom said. The doctor then said, it's possible that this little girl is actually Alice's lost memories. Sometimes after therapy and medication, old memories can start resurfacing. Maybe this little girl was someone from Alice's childhood. A friend or something. What? This was crazy. Was Alex from my childhood? I didn't understand. I sat bolt upright and stuttered, Are, are you hiding something from me? I could tell right away they were, because my parents looked panicked, and my mom said, Listen, sweetie, it's been a long day for you. Now isn't the right time for this story. But I'll tell you tomorrow, okay? The next day, my parents drove me to the church that they donate to every year. I was so confused, and kept asking them who Alex was. Eventually, a nun appeared, and we all sat down in a little room on the third floor. Then the secrets came pouring out. My parents weren't my real parents. After I had the accident, my parents adopted me from the church. They would picked me up at the hospital right after I recovered and didn't tell me what happened because they didn't want to make my life any harder. They just wanted me to be happy. I couldn't believe it. Then the nun asked me to explain what had been happening recently, and I told her about Alex. As soon as I said her name, the nun looked shocked and quickly pulled out a photo album. She showed me a photo of two twin girls and said, This is you, Alice, holding the teddy bear. And next to you is your twin sister. Her name is Alex. Suddenly, the room was spinning. This was all too much. I had a twin sister? Before I even had time to ask anything, the nun took my hand and led me over to a big window near the stairs. 
Through her words, all the past memories came rushing back to me. My biological parents had brought me and Alex to the church because they couldn't afford to raise us. No families wanted to adopt both of us, so the nun told us we would be separated. This was the most painful news we'd ever heard. So that night, we decided to escape together. I gave Alex my teddy bear to hold so that I could climb out the window first. But unfortunately, I slipped and fell from such a height that I'm lucky I even survived. That's what wiped all my memories. I stared at the window as the nun told me all of this. This was insane! How many secrets had been hidden from me all this time? So, where is Alex now? I asked, tears rolling down my cheeks. Turns out, Alex had been adopted by another family, but the nuns had lost contact with her because the family had moved overseas. I felt like I couldn't breathe. I had to see my sister. But how could I find her without any information? I started to search social media like crazy, but nothing came up. I wouldn't give up hope, though. I updated my journey finding Alex every day on a personal blog. Not one night I went to sleep without thinking about her and wondering how she was doing. Fortunately, people on the internet actually showed a lot of interest and support for my story. It got passed around, but so far, there still wasn't any hint about Alex. Even the illusion of baby Alex wouldn't show up anymore, ever since the day I heard the truth. But I knew in my bones that we would find our way back to each other again somehow. And then, one morning, I woke up from a strange dream with another migraine. So I decided to take a walk and get some fresh air, and drop by the pastry shop for breakfast. I glanced over to the alley as usual, and I saw myself pacing around with a teddy bear in hand, looking kind of lost. Sounds like I'd lost the plot, right? Well, I hadn't, because it actually was Alex. We were frozen for like a whole minute when our eyes met. Then, without a single word being said, we just ran into each other's arms in tears. So, long story short, Alex had moved to France since 10, and ever since then, she'd also been trying to find me. Thanks to a post on Twitter, she realized I was still here, and so she applied for a scholarship to America so she could find me. And, well, there she was, standing right in front of me. Words can express how unreal it still was to look at her every time. Oh, don't worry. Everyone, including my parents, have confirmed she's an actual person. Not another product of my imagination. <laughs> Thank God. I can't believe the crazy roller coaster ride that my life has been on for the past months. From that moment on, we were inseparable. And now, we're planning on moving in together. The only thing left for us to do is to find our biological parents. Alex remembers them clearly so she's been filling me in on the first eight years of our life together. Wish us luck! Hey guys, I'm Vanessa, and I want to tell you about my first love. So, do you all remember your first love? Yes, right? I mean, come on, how could you ever forget that First time butterflies in the tummy feeling, hand holding, and that kiss. In the heat of first love, it's easy to believe this will last forever and be a true fairy tale. Only so many first loves lead to a messy breakups that turn into a nightmare. My first love was with a boy named Julian, but you'll have to stick around to find out if our love story was a fairy tale dream or a fairy tale doom. Julian and I started off as friends, best friends. He lived across the street from me and our families were close. We hung out all the time, so much so that our parents teased that we'd get married one day. At the time I thought, no way, but we were just kids back then. Then, when I was about 10, I started to look at him differently. He was so cute and sweet and I thought about him all the time. He liked me too, right? I mean... He bought me my favorite candy, let me play video games with him, and stuck up for me when these boys from school teased me. And then when I was 15, Julian and I were at our favorite spot. It was a really big old tree in the middle of the park. 
We went there loads and would lean against the tree trunk, do our homework, listen to music with one headphone, read books, basically anything relaxing. That's when he told me the shocking news. His dad had a new job in Germany. And they were moving there. What? How could this be? I was so surprised, I started crying. I expected him to comfort me, but instead he took out a pocket knife and started to carve on the tree. When he finished, he said, Ta-da! How does it look? He'd carve J. Hart V in it. Oh gosh, he loved me too. I felt myself turn bright red and didn't want him to see me like that. So looking downward, I went to punch his arm but punched his face by mistake. Oops! Julian held his face and yelled, Vanessa, what was that for? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Julian, I, I feel the same, I told him. We both started laughing, then we pinky promised each other that we would keep in touch. He took my hand and told me, Ness, I'll come back for you, I promise. Then he leaned in and kissed me. And, wow, it was truly magical. And then he left. The first few weeks without him were the hardest. I didn't really have any other friends and I was so bored and lonely. I lived for my video calls with Julian. They were the only thing keeping me going. Telling him stuff that happened at school, such as how my math teacher wore the same hideous floor dress all week, made me feel like he was still there. Things went on like that for a while. It slowly became a habit for us to have a video chat at least twice a week. But then a couple of days after my 16th birthday, things changed. It was a normal Sunday morning and I woke up and went to wash my face. Ah! There were red spots all over my cheeks! I screamed so loudly that I woke everybody up! Even my neighbors had to run over and ask what the scream was about! My parents took me to the hospital and I was diagnosed with a disease called lupus. For all of you who don't know what it is, it's a skin disease that causes rashes or sores. In my case, it was all over my cheeks. The same as what my grandma had. Worst of all, there was no cure. The doctors could only improve the way my skin looked, prevent scarring, and help me feel better overall. This couldn't be happening! Why me? When we got home, I ran right upstairs to my room and stared into the mirror. I'd gone from pretty to ugly in the space of a day. It wasn't fair. And then suddenly my phone rang. It was Julian. Oh no, in all the drama, I'd forgotten about our planned video call. I couldn't let him see me like this. I was so exhausted with all this lupus stuff that I couldn't think of a solution. So I just turned my phone off. I texted him the next day that I was busy so I couldn't FaceTime with him. This carried on for weeks. I just couldn't bring myself to tell him the truth. Then he texted me saying that he got the message loud and clear, that I didn't want to be his friend anymore. I texted him back telling him this wasn't the case and I'd just been super busy. But the damage was done. He stopped calling me after that and even unfriended me on Facebook. And that was it. I lost my best friend and also my first love, all because I couldn't cope with my new appearance. Little by little, I was shutting myself off and pushing everyone around me away. I just didn't want anyone to see me like this. Instead, I wanted to hide away from the world. Each day, I'd watch my classmates hang out together and I'd walk off by myself and go to my favorite tree, lean against the trunk, close my eyes, listen to some sad songs, and remember all the good times I had with Julian. This was basically part of my daily routine during the whole four years of high school. School finished and I moved away to college. Things got better. I made a few friends who accepted me for the way I looked and slowly, I started to accept it too. There was this one tree on campus. It looked just like the one back at home, so I went there all the time. One day, I was sitting there reading a book when this guy in a baseball cap started measuring the ground. Then, without looking at me, he said, Excuse me, can you please move? I was confused, so I asked, Um, sure, but why? The guy replied, Oh, the college is going to build a new cafeteria here, so we have to chop down this tree. What? They wanted to chop down my favorite spot on campus just so that they could build some stupid cafeteria? No way! Who was this guy anyway? And didn't anyone ever tell him it was rude not to look people in the eyes when talking to them? I gave him a piece of my mind. 
You architects are all the same. You never give a damn about what you have to destroy to build an ugly building. Leave this tree alone or I'll chop you down. Then I gave him a really dirty look. He just shrugged and carried on measuring. This made me so mad that I kicked him in the butt, causing him to fall onto the ground. His cap fell off and whoa, it couldn't be. Julian? Was that really him? But how? Wasn't he in Germany? Why was he here? And why didn't he recognize me? I mean, I had a different haircut and all, but I didn't think I've changed that much. Or was it because of my lupus? Suddenly, I heard him say, What the? Are you mad? What's wrong with you? Oh gosh, I totally forgotten that he was still lying on the ground. I mumbled out a, Sorry, and immediately rushed back to my dorm. That night, I couldn't sleep. Instead, all I could think about was Julian. He was so handsome and so tall. How could he have become so good looking? Ah, why did this stupid disease pick me? There was my first love right in front of me after all those years apart. But because of my disease, he didn't know who I was. He blossomed and I'd well, I hadn't. Maybe it was for the better that Julian didn't recognize me. If he knew this was how I look like now, oh boy, I didn't even want to imagine how embarrassed I would be. So, okay, let's just put it aside for now. What I first needed to do was save my tree. There's no way I was letting the college chop it down. I did some research and found out that the construction would begin in a week. So, I had time to convince as many students as I could to protest against it. And when the day came, I had about 20 people with me. We all held signs and said, save the tree and stop the chop. The head of campus, Julian, and the construction workers were trying to make us leave, but we were persistent. At the end, they had to push back the construction dates. One of us remained by the tree at all times, come rain or shine. It was exhausting and cold, but it was worth it when the tree was saved. Then, one day when I was on tree guarding duty, my friend rushed over to me and excitedly told me that the college was going to change the location of the new building. That was such great news. Apparently, Juliana had told them that the ground was more suitable in another location. Why would he help us all of a sudden? Did he have a change of mind? I went to class with those questions that kept bugging my mind. And right after school was out, I came over to the tree again. And to my surprise, I saw Julian standing next to it. I walked towards him and asked, Why did you convince them to change the location of the building? I mean, we really appreciate it, but why the change of heart? Julian froze for a second and then said, Hey, it's Vanessa, back with the final part of my story. So, my first love Julian moved to Germany and due to my insecurities, we lost touch. Then, years later, I saw him at my college campus, measuring my favorite tree to be chopped down. He didn't recognize me, but thanks to him, the tree was saved. He said to me, This tree must mean a lot to you, or else you wouldn't have fought so hard to save it. I had a tree like this once, he sighed. Please continue to protect it. I felt a pain in my heart. I knew he meant our tree back home. This was all so overwhelming. There I was looking at my first love, but he was oblivious to who I was. And I couldn't tell him because I was terrified that doing so would mean I'd lose him all over again. After that, I didn't see him around campus anymore. Was he living here now? Was he in another city? There were so many questions I wanted to ask him. Then my mom called and told me to come home for the weekend. I arrived there to find her setting out food in the kitchen. On seeing me, she said, Oh honey, I have a surprise for you. Julian and his family are back in town and they're coming over for lunch. What? Oh no. Why hadn't she told me sooner? I started to panic. What was I going to do now? I rushed to my room and tried to find anything I could use to cover my face. Finally, I found one thing. I heard my mom opening the door for Julian and his family. Then my mom cheerfully shouted, Vanessa! Where are you, sweetie? Come down! Julian is here and oh my, he's so handsome. But my parents' smile soon disappeared as soon as they saw me coming down the stairs. They literally stood there with their mouths wide open. 
My mother stuttered, v Vanessa, what in God's name are you wearing? Yeah, so the only thing I could find to cover my face was a face mask. Worse still, it had a smiling dog face on it. I know I look ridiculous, but at least my lupus was covered. Thinking fast, I muttered, um, I have a cold and I don't want anyone to catch it. Then I turned and saw Julian and my heart fluttered. He gave me a confused look. He clearly didn't know how to take my accessory. This was so awkward. The last memory he had of me was that I didn't want to video call with him anymore. And that was five years ago. Ugh, this sucked. I nodded at him and he nodded back. I caught him looking at me, no doubt because I was wearing that dumb mask. But we didn't actually speak to each other. Luckily, our parents were carrying the conversation. But then, my mom suggested that we should all go out for dinner tomorrow night. Mom! Not again! Why didn't she realize that I needed to be pre-warned about these things? Then again, it was so easy for her as she had perfect looking skin. Luckily, Julian's family were busy tomorrow. Phew! But they suggested having dinner the day after that. Ugh! Dinner was unavoidable, so I had to figure out a way of disguising my face. So, the evening of the dinner, I ran downstairs and my mom glared at me. Vanessa, what on earth are you wearing? You look like Elton John. So yeah, I was wearing these huge fashion sunglasses. They were the only ones I could find online that I knew would arrive in time. I replied, this is the new trend now. You're just too old to understand. At the restaurant, Julian and his family gave me the weirdest looks. But I acted like everything was normal and mentioned how good the food was. To be honest, I felt so awkward and just hoped this meal would be over soon. It all got a bit too much, so I went outside to get some fresh air. That's when Julian appeared. At first, he just stood there next to me in silence. It got to a point where I couldn't take it anymore, so I said, since when did you come back here? He replied, Since one month. Feeling annoyed, I replied, Why didn't you call me? Ness, you're the one who didn't want to be friends anymore. Oh no, you got it all wrong. I had some problems, girl problems. I couldn't tell you. You know, I was really lonely in Germany. You were the only friend I had. His voice sagged. I replied, I know, it was stupid of me. I'm sorry, but you're back now. Can we be friends again? He looked at me for a bit, then smiled and said, Seriously, how can I be mad at you now? I mean, look at you. And then we hugged. I finally had my best friend back, but this wasn't enough for me. Seeing him again made me realize I still loved him even after all these years. My face was the problem. I was convinced that on seeing the real me, he'd run for the hills. After that, Julian and I texted each other loads, but then he asked me out on a date. At first, I was super excited, but then the reality of this dawned on me. I put on my prettiest dress, but as I stood in front of the mirror, all I saw were my bright red cheeks. Maybe I should just risk it. Maybe he would understand and still love me? I mean, it was inner beauty that counted, right? But no, I couldn't do it. So, I messaged him back, saying that I couldn't go out with him. But he was persistent. In the end, I ran out of excuses, so eventually, I had to agree. Okay, so now what? I couldn't keep on wearing face masks and sunglasses. Then I had an idea. What about makeup? I knew it would make my skin worse, but this was an emergency. I put some makeup on, but the rashes were still visible. So I put more and more and more and ugh. I resembled Billy the Puppet from the Saw movies. Then there was a knock at the door. <gasps> Oh no, he was here already! Oh well, I hope he likes horror movies. On seeing me, Julian looked kind of shocked, but he tried to act normal. The restaurant we went to was so nice, but every time he looked at me, he had to try his hardest not to laugh, which in turn made me want to laugh too. Awkward. Afterward, we went for a walk through the park when it suddenly began to rain. So we hurried over to our favorite big tree to take cover. Julian found the carving on the tree and said, Do you remember this? That day I promise you I'd come back for you. Then he turned to me, pulled me towards him, his face came closer and, and oh my god, was he going to kiss me? But then he stopped and said, oh Ness, your makeup is floating away, I have a tissue, let me clean your face. Wait, what? 
Oh no, not now. I panicked. I didn't know what to do, so I hid my face from Julian and said, Don't look at me. Can you please go? Confused, he asked, What? You're acting really weird. What's wrong? Then he turned to look at my face. I pushed him away and said, No, no, I'm fine. I'm just having a girl problem moment. But Julian kept insisting, so I freaked out and ran into the rain. He ran behind me yelling, Vanessa, stop! I kept running, but then I tripped and my face fell into a muddy puddle. Oh, great! My whole face was covered with mud and my knee was bleeding, so I couldn't stand up. Julian had to help me hobble to the nearest drugstore to buy some bandages and some betadine to clean the wound for me. I sat on a bench feeling like a wounded puppy when he took out a tissue and started wiping the mud from my face. At first, I stopped him, but then he gave me a really serious look, so I let him clean my face. Well, that was it. Julian would finally see my face and he would definitely not want to date me anymore. While cleaning my face, he looked surprised. Then he said, Wait a minute, you're going to college in Florida, right? Didn't I meet you like a few weeks ago on the campus? Why didn't you tell me it was you? Because I didn't want you to see me like this. I turned my head away. He looked confused, so he asked, Like what exactly? Ness, you're acting so weird. What did he mean? Was he trying to make fun of me? So I shouted in anger, it's my face. Don't act like you don't see it. I was afraid that if you saw my face, you wouldn't want to be with me anymore. Julian shook his head and said, no, Ness, why would I ever do that? To me, you will always be beautiful. Beauty isn't only about having a pretty face. It's about having a pretty mind, a pretty heart, and a pretty soul. And then he kissed me on the forehead. Oh gosh, I never imagined that it would turn out like this. Julian was indeed the sweetest person ever and I should have never have doubted him. Well, Julian and I became an official couple. Loving him makes me so happy. He makes me believe in myself and reminds me that regardless of my lupus, I'm still beautiful. And we will soon get married in a few months. I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with him happily ever after. So, as you can see, in the end, Julian was my first and my last love, which means my fairy tale dreams did come true. But let me tell you this, it's not important if you marry your first love or not. It's important that you marry someone who makes you happy and someone who accepts you for who you are. So, when you find someone like that, then hold on to them, whether this is your first or your 21st love. I'm Meg, and I'm just your standard 21-year-old college girl. Well, at least I thought I was. My story begins normally enough. I had this huge crush on a guy who was in his senior year. He's called Ian, and he's funny, sweet, and extremely attractive. I've noticed him since my first year here, but it's only recently that I think he's started to notice me, too. College life meant that our paths crossed in the campus, coffee house, the corridors, the library, and at house parties, so he did know my name at least. So it's not the kind of pathetic crush when they don't even know that you exist. Now, whenever he sees me in these places, we smile and say hey to each other, and his eyes always linger on me that split second longer. I really figured that his lingering looks meant he had a crush on me too, and I had a chance with him. I'd been in the cheer team back in high school, but initially, I was unsure about joining the team at college, as my workload's so intense. But Ian's a massive sports fanatic, and he's on the football team. So, I joined the cheerleading team to have an excuse to be close to him, as the cheer practice had the same schedule as the football team. My plan worked, and we started talking more. So, okay, it was only small talk. Stuff like, hey, how was practice? And it's the perfect weather for practice, isn't it? Well, they might not have won conversation of the year, but it was a start. Besides, sweaty end-of-practice chats didn't put me at my flirting prime, as it's hard to maintain cuteness when my hair was stuck to my forehead. Talking to him gave me a buzz and meant that I couldn't sleep that night. To celebrate their awesome season ranking, the football team planned a party. Of course, they'd invited the cheerleaders, but as a newbie, I was nervous about going along, as I didn't know anyone all that well. After the practice, I was walking home when a familiar voice shouted, Wait up, behind me. I spun around to see that it was Ian. As delighted as I was, I couldn't shake off the feeling that I was being watched. 
I looked over to the right a bit and saw a woman in a black luxury car was staring at me, but as soon as I spotted her, she closed the car window and looked away. That was a bit strange, but I couldn't care less about it, as my crush was standing right in front of me. You're coming to the party, right? Bring your friends over too, the more the merrier. Ian smiled at me. I stood there in a daze, but I managed to nod and said, Yeah, sure. He quickly walked away, but didn't forget to turn back to tell me, See you tonight. I got jelly legs and had to lean on the closest wall to me to balance myself. Was this real? I pinched myself, and it was totally real. Ian technically just asked me out, right? Then I noticed something. Ian got into the passenger side of the black car with the strange staring woman. This was odd. I mean, who was she? Maybe she was his aunt or something, and she'd only been staring weirdly at me as he'd told her all about me? Excitement overruled my uneasy feeling. I rushed home so I could plan out my outfit. On my way back, I called up my best friend Liv. Ian told me to bring a friend, and who else would I bring? Liv is my best friend. We're inseparable. She often sits out in the field waiting for me to finish my cheerleading practice, and smiles over at me when she sees Ian chatting to me. I told Liv to come pick me up. I didn't want to drive because I think I'll be leaving with Ian later anyway, and if that's the case, Liv could drive home herself. We got to the house party. Everyone was having fun. Liv quickly blended in on the dance floor. I tried to enjoy it too, but couldn't help but look around, searching for Ian, the only reason why I was there. As I was lurking, I also met eyes with a very cute guy. He kept on looking at me. As cute as he was, my sights were firming set on Ian. After what seemed like ten laps of the cramped house, I finally found Ian. He's walking in with a red solo cup in hand, casually fist-bumping everyone. It's like there's a halo around him. He's so hot! He walked towards me and was really friendly. Then Liv appeared by my side and gave me a hug. Ian asked Liv lots of questions, which I thought was sweet. He was making an effort with my friend, which made him so thoughtful and polite. Now that I knew Ian was around, I could finally relax and enjoy the party a bit. Then I went to the backyard to get some beer for me and Liv. I came back inside carrying the beers. Liv had moved, so I went in search of her. That's when I found her kissing someone by the staircase. Firstly, I felt excited for her. My bestie was kissing a cute boy. But then I realized that the boy she was kissing had the same light wash denim jeans on as Ian, and the same perfectly styled hair. Wait a minute. It was Ian! My best friend in the whole world was kissing the boy I liked! I was so upset I dropped the beers, then ran outside in tears. I sat on the curb feeling devastated. How could Liv do this to me? I looked up through teary eyes and noticed that further up the road, there was a luxury black vehicle parked up. That was weird. Was it the same vehicle as before? I went to the football team party certain that I was finally going to hook up with my crush Ian. Only, I found Ian kissing my best friend Liv. Now I was sitting outside on the curb feeling dreadful. Jeez, this night sucked. I stared at the black vehicle. Why was it following me? Maybe I should go and check it out. Suddenly, a hand tapped my shoulder. Startled, I turned around and saw that it was Ian. Thank you so much, Meg, for setting me up with Liv. Don't worry, I'll definitely pay you back. How about lunch on Sunday? My treat. He winked, then walked off. I sat there, open-mouthed. Was he serious? He hadn't even noticed that I was crying. What a jerk. I felt like I was about to blow. My sobbing increased. I felt so rejected. So does that mean he didn't like me, but he liked Liv? Had he ever liked me? What was wrong with me? Worse still, Liv knows I have a massive crush on him, but she still kissed him? I felt so betrayed. I'd lost both my crush and best friend in the same night. This party was terrible! Suddenly, I remembered the black vehicle, so I looked over to where it was, only it wasn't there anymore. I shrugged. I had bigger things to deal with right now than some weirdo in a posh car. The tears wouldn't stop. I was basically a waterfall. I wiped them onto the back of my arm, but this didn't help much. Someone sat down next to me. A guy. 
Hey, what's wrong? He asked. Through blurry eyes, I realized that it was the cute guy who'd been eyeing me up earlier at the party. I was too upset to reply to him, so I just sat there crying and shivering, which wasn't a good look. He took his jacket off and placed it around my shoulders. I can't have you freezing to death on my conscience. He smiled. His smile was infectious, and even through my tears, I found myself smiling too. Whatever it is, you shouldn't let it ruin your night. You're here now, so you should have a good time. This guy was right. Liv and Ian were certainly having a great time, so why should I be the one sat here miserable? I didn't need Ian or Liv, so they were both welcome to each other. I was at this lame party now, and I didn't have my car with me, so I was stuck here. I may as well make the most of it. Let's get a drink, I blubbered out. I wiped my tears, and the guy helped me up, and we went inside. Jackpot for me. He's very cute. His name's Nick, and he's friends with one of the guys on the football team. I spent the rest of the party with Nick. We danced around and played party games. Turns out I sucked at beer pong, so I ended up quite tipsy from all the beer I had to down. I felt tired and wanted to go home, but how on earth could I sit in the same car as that traitor Liv? Talk about the most awkward car journey home ever. I couldn't put myself through it. Then, Nick offered me a ride home. I acted shy, but agreed. I mean, who could say no to him? Besides, he'd cheered me up tonight. I told him the address and dozed off a bit in the back seat, then woke up just in time to tell him to turn left at the next intersection. Then it'd be my house. But to my horror, he sped up and drove past it. Confused, I told him that we needed to make a U-turn, but he just ignored me and smirked. I panicked. Then I yelled at him, What are you doing? Suddenly, he answered the phone. I heard a female voice on the other end. I stayed quiet to listen, but couldn't tell what she was saying. He replied, Yes, I've got her here. We're on the way. Was I really being kidnapped? I needed to find a way to get out. I thought about calling my sister to help pick me up, and I'd jump out of the car at a red stop. I called her and whispered to her the situation and to come find me at the gas station we're about to pass by. I didn't hang up just yet. I told Nick, I've already told my sister. If you don't release me now, she'll call the police. He looked taken aback. My plan did work a little, but not enough to make him stop the car. I had to switch to plan B. Jumping out of the car. From now till we get to the gas station, there would be three red stops, and I'd have to brace myself to jump, or else we'd get to the highway and there would be no turning back. First, it was a green light. Second one, I had my hands on the car door handle, but was too scared to open it. Third one, I had to do this now or never. As we approached the lights, I closed my eyes and was about to do it. Then he suddenly turned left. I panicked. He stopped the car and told me to get out. Confused, I froze. Then his phone rang again. I saw the pic of the caller. It's a woman. Seems a little familiar. As the phone rang, he yelled at me to get out again. I quickly opened the door and fell to the ground. He drove away immediately. I sobbed out to my sister on the phone, and through my fear, I tried explaining what had just happened. With my shaking hands, I managed to share my location with her. Then I walked to try and find some place with bright lights to wait for her. I was in total panic mode until I got home. As I calmed down a bit, I started to put things together and wondered why he did this to me. And then it came to my mind that the caller was the woman in the black luxury car I saw that afternoon. Then this means it all had something to do with Ian. Is it because she thought I was Ian's girlfriend or something? But when she found out I wasn't, she ordered my release? If Ian has something to do with this, then that means Liv could now be in danger. Should I warn her, or is it now that traitor's problem, not mine? I'm mad with her, but I don't want anything bad to happen to her. I don't know what this is all about. What should I do now? Sometimes in life, we have a chance encounter with someone who ends up changing our life. This is exactly what happened to me, and it was totally unexpected. You see, I was pretty lonely at the time. I'm Amelia, by the way, and I'm 20 years old. 
I was living all on my own in a tiny house in Portland. It was my mom's house, but she sadly passed away from cancer two years ago. I'm not going to say that life was easy for me, because it wasn't. All I wanted was to become a comic book artist. I love art so much, but the only way I could make this dream a reality was to make money. Ever since graduating from high school, I'd been working as a waitress to make ends meet, and also to save up enough cash to enroll in art college. Honestly, this job got me through the hardest time in my life. The days, weeks, and months after my mom passed away were so painful, and the restaurant kept me busy, so I barely had time to sit with all my feelings. Moreover, little did I know how much this waitressing job would change my life forever. It all started with an incident in the restaurant. I'll never forget that day. I was carrying a tray of food when I accidentally spilled some water onto the shoes of some fancy girl. Oh my god, she went crazy. She started screaming at me, and even though I frantically apologized right away, she still asked to speak to my manager. I leapt down and tried to clean the water off her shoes with a cloth, and that's when I heard a voice. Hey, stop! What do you think you're doing? I looked up and saw the boy she was with staring at me. He looked disgusted at me, and then said to the girl, Babe, let's bounce before that waitress ruins your shoes even more with her filthy hands. Come on, let's hit the mall. I'll buy you a new pair of shoes. Clearly, he was her boyfriend, and as soon as he mentioned new shoes, her eyes sparkled with joy as she said, Yay, babe! I want a new bag too, though. Could you? And her boyfriend just laughed and said, Anything you want, my princess. They got up to leave and smirked at me as they walked away. I couldn't believe how rude they were, especially the boy. I felt so angry, I wished I could slap him right across that cocky face. But of course, I didn't. There was no way I could risk losing my job. But I knew that if I ever saw his face again, I'd definitely give him a piece of my mind. And, well, believe it or not, I did indeed see him again. The world works in mysterious ways, and I guess we were destined to meet again. A few weeks after that, one evening, I was heading home and passed by the park to feed the stray cats as usual. While I was playing with them, I noticed some guy heading towards me. Suddenly, he grabbed my arms and pulled me towards him. I started shouting at him and trying to push him away, but he was too strong. Then, out of nowhere, someone said, What's going on? I'm trying to sleep over here. Keep it down. A drunk, dirty-looking homeless guy walked towards us, and for a second I was terrified. But then I realized he was helping me. He started shouting at the guy holding on to me, saying, Hey you, are you deaf or something? Let her go and keep silent. The jerk was getting heated, and the next moment, he punched that homeless guy in the face, and then they started fighting. Then I freaked out and didn't know what to do. I pulled my phone out of my pocket and played a recording of a police siren. I live alone, so I know all the tricks. Well, that did it. The jerk who'd grabbed me suddenly jumped up and sprinted out of the park. The homeless guy who'd helped me was still lying on the ground, so I helped him up. He was black and blue, and there were even some scratches on his face. And as I got closer to him, I realized he looked familiar. O-M-G. Wasn't he the rude guy from the restaurant? What was he doing looking all dirty like a homeless guy? He had his eyes closed, so I patted his face and said, Hey, wake up! What are you doing out here? He opened his eyes and asked, Do I know you? He stared at me for a while, then eyeing my uniform and smiled. Oh, the little waitress. Guess what? I'm poorer than you now. Then he passed out. I was so annoyed that I'd bumped into him again. I was about to leave him lying there, but then I realized he'd saved me, and I could hardly leave him there with all his injuries. So, yeah, in the end, I decided to take him back to my place to get my first aid kit. I cleaned up his scratches, and then let him crash on my sofa. The next morning, he was super surprised when he woke up. I told him what had happened, and that he'd saved my life. So I saved his. Then I said he should probably head home now, but he just stared at me. 
and that's when he told me his story. He really was homeless. His parents had kicked him out because they'd found out he wasn't their biological son. What on earth? How could any parent do that? It's not like he has tricked them, but it was due to some mix-up at birth. So, wasn't he also a victim? I felt sorry for him, but still, it was none of my business. I had to get to work, so I asked him to leave, but he begged me to let him stay. I just looked at him in shock and said, Um, how about you go to your rich girlfriend's place instead? I really need to get going now. But he didn't budge. He said, Oh, don't even mention that gold digger. She only cared about me when I was the only son of a millionaire. Now that I've got nothing, not a cent. She broke up with me. Wow. Shocker. But, well, it's not like I couldn't tell that she has a lousy personality right from the get-go. So I said, Well, what about your friends? Can't you crash with them? But he said no. It started to frustrate me. So I said, You can't stay here. I don't even know a thing about you. Then he splurted out, Hi, I'm Jude. I'm 22 years old. I've got all my fingers and toes, and my criminal record is clean. There you go. Now you know me. And he topped it off with a grin, as if that could win me over. He then went on to say that he'd pay rent, and that when he found a job and stuff, he'd leave. I hesitated. I mean, I couldn't live with a strange guy. But then I thought about that extra money I'd get if he helped with rent. I could really use that money for my college fees. He could see I wasn't sure. So he said, Come on, please. I mean, I did save your life last night. But there's only one bedroom. I said, Don't worry, I'll sleep here. He pointed at the sofa. I thought for a while, then nodded my head and agreed. And only for one month, okay? Then I made him shower and change his clothes, since he was so gross and dirty. But he told me he didn't have anything to change to. I was kicked out, remember? And he even had the cheek to ask me for some money to buy new clothes. No chance. I told him he could wear my clothes, since some of them were quite big. At first, he refused. He said there was no way he was wearing women's clothes. So I said he either wore them or kept his dirty clothes and left my house. Ha! Huh. Of course he had no choice. And seeing him in my floral pants was hilarious. A few days later, though, he still hadn't found a job. Every night I'd come home to find him lying on the sofa in my oversized pajamas. He was so messy and lazy. And after a week, I couldn't bear it. I nagged him. You have to find a job. Or how do you expect to pay me rent? And the least you can do is clean up around here. I'm not your maid. He said he'd been looking for an office job, but it was hard as he had no knowledge and experience. This annoyed me, so I suggested he apply for a delivery man position. He looked at me in horror and said, What do you think I am? Oh, hello, you're a homeless boy with nothing. What else do you want? I thought. Then I said he could come work with me in the restaurant, but he refused saying that his friends went there all the time and they'd laugh at him. I was speechless. I said, suit yourself, but after one month, you're out of here. A few hours later, he knocked on my bedroom door and said he'd take the restaurant job, but he needed clothes. Finally, I'm glad that this boy has come to his senses. That's great. You can start from tomorrow. I'll call the manager. And I know the exact place where you could get all the stylish clothes for free. Let's go! At first, he was so excited, but when he realized that I was taking him to a clothing donation center, his face changed. He looked disgusted and said, No way! I smirked and said, It's up to you. You either pick something to wear from this place, or you can wear my clothes. I've got a floral dress that would really bring out the color of your eyes. He looked so sulky as he reluctantly went through the rack of used clothes. It was so funny. But everything was only about to start. You won't believe what happened next. Stay tuned for part two to see how things went between Jude and I. Hi again, it's Amelia here. 
In the first part of my story, I had a horrible encounter with a rude guy in the restaurant I worked in. I hoped I'd never have to meet that kind of awful person ever again. But life doesn't work like that, does it? And ironically, I bumped into him around a month after that, and he saved my life. Then I ended up paying him back by letting him move in with me as he was homeless. And after a few days, I just had enough of his excuses of not being able to find a job. So I told him he could come work in the restaurant with me. I introduced him to my manager, and because he's quite a bright looking guy, he immediately got the job. However, it wasn't all plain sailing. I mean, what's with his laziness and clumsiness? He was a walking disaster. He broke so many dishes within his first few shifts only, he'd be lucky if he even got any salary. And that's not all. He shouted at a kid who dropped an ice cream on the floor he'd just cleaned. Obviously, the kid burst out crying, which made Jude even angrier. You can just imagine how much our manager had to apologize to both the kid and his mom. And after that, she was furious with Jude and threatened to fire him all in his first week. Meanwhile, things at home weren't much better. He didn't lift a finger. The place was such a mess. And one time I asked him to do some laundry while I went out to pick up some groceries. Well, I came home to find the laundry room covered in bubbles. And there he was, standing in the middle of that mess, confusingly pushing all the buttons possible to make it stop. He had basically poured the whole bottle of detergent in there. I couldn't believe it. He was useless, and he kept breaking things. I actually had to keep a list of it all so that when he got his salary, he could pay me back. He was a nightmare. And yet, even though he was lazy and messy, that didn't stop him spending hours on his hair. I kid you not, I've watched him fix his hair for about 90 minutes once, and I swear, it still looked the same. Not to mention, one time, I accidentally walked in on him singing in the bathroom while stroking his hair. All he was wearing was a little towel, and we both got such a fright, we screamed, and I ran out of there in embarrassment. I came close to kicking him out so many times. He drove me crazy. Honestly, one night I was working late, so I asked if he could prepare dinner. Just a simple pasta. I mean, how hard could that be, right? Well... It was mission impossible for Jude. He burnt the pasta. Burnt it? How does one burn pasta? There were bowls and pans everywhere. When I started shouting at him, he just laughed and shoved me a dish of burnt noodles and said, Oh, come on, Amelia. I'm a chef. It's art. Now please, enjoy my signature dish, the smoky charcoal pasta. I could have killed this guy. But lucky for him, his humor has saved him this time. So instead, I decided to teach him how to cook. And fortunately, he was actually a pretty decent chef, and he enjoyed it. One night I came home, and he'd made a Thai green curry. It unexpectedly looked quite nice. Still, I was nervous to try it. But OMG, it was delicious. He proudly told me how the chef at the restaurant had given him the recipe along with some cooking tips. That's great! And even though the kitchen was a total mess, it was a start, so I decided he could cook from then on, and then I'd do the washing up. Pretty soon, his one month was up. I told him it was time to move out, but he begged me to let him stay longer, as he'd barely got any salary from the restaurant due to owing so much from all the broken dishes. I wanted to say no, but if I was honest with myself, it had been quite lonely living by myself, and even though he was a total klutz, I kind of enjoyed having some company. Plus, he was a top chef. I pretended to be thinking about it for a sec, and then said, Okay, fine, but you've got one more month. Then you're out. He was super happy, thanking me nonstop while running to the kitchen, saying he'd cook me a special dinner in return. Just like that, we learned to get along better with each other, as we lived and worked together. And, well... Time flew, and soon, another month had gone by, and yet neither of us even brought it up. So, he kept on staying. Then one day, while Jude and I were working, a group of stuck-up girls came in. One of them suddenly said, Guys, look! Isn't that our Prince Jude? Why is he working here like a loser? 
then they all burst out laughing. This made me angry, and I was about to go over and say something when I realized that the girl who'd spoken was Jude's ex. I knew Jude had heard, and I thought he'd get annoyed, but he just ignored her and kept working. But the girls kept on laughing, and it was seriously annoying. I went over to take their order, but Jude's ex refused to be served by me. She kept asking for Jude to take their order, and when I said he was busy, she demanded to see our manager. Eventually, he went to serve them, but his ex kept on harassing him. She even dropped water all over the floor so that he'd have to come and clean it up. I offered to do it for him, but he wouldn't let me. And then it got worse. As they were leaving, that girl dropped a $10 tip on the floor. I was furious. What a spoiled brat. I thought Jude would leave it, but he calmly sat down to pick it up while the group of girls all burst out laughing as they walked out of the restaurant. I ran over to comfort Jude, but he just smiled and said, Hey, I have ten bucks. What do you want for dinner? My treat. Then he went back to work, but every time I looked over at him, I could see he was hurt. I really wanted to yell at his ex. How rude can a person get? Later that night at dinner, we spoke about everything that had happened that day. I told him he shouldn't feel sad about his ex, because she was rude and never deserved him in the first place. But then he just laughed it off and said that it wasn't that gold digger that he was bothered by, but actually because it reminded him of his old attitude and the ways he used to treat people, including me on that first day we'd met. Then he sighed and said, I bet if I'd been a better person, a decent son, then my parents wouldn't have kicked me out that heartlessly, even when I wasn't their actual son. Suddenly I felt so sorry for him that I didn't know what to say to make it better. But to be fair, looking back at the person he was back then when we first met versus now, he was like a totally different guy. He had been doing a great job at work, and all our colleagues loved him. One day, a kid dropped her ice cream, and I stared in shock, waiting for Jude to freak out. But instead, he went over and asked if she was okay, and if she'd like another ice cream. I couldn't believe it. He was so sweet to her. I couldn't stop myself from smiling at him. He'd seriously changed. And even though it pains me to admit, he's a very good-looking guy. So naturally, he got a lot of attention. In fact, a lot of girls came to the restaurant just to be served by him. They even openly flirted with him, and he surely loved it. I just rolled my eyes, wishing I didn't have to see that. There was one girl in particular who came to the restaurant almost every day. She was super pretty, and obviously was trying to get his attention. I noticed one shift that Jude was kind of flirting back. How irritating! I guess he hadn't changed that much then. Then one day, I saw her hand him a piece of paper. When he came back to the counter, he was grinning and said to me, Looks like I've got a date tonight. I was so annoyed and said, It's not okay to flirt with the customers. I'll tell our manager. Then I stormed off. Later that afternoon, he clocked out first without telling me, and when I got home from work, I saw him being all dressed up for his date, which made me feel so grumpy for no reason. He was whistling and sounded so happy. Then as he walked out the door, he said, Don't wait up for me. It might be a late one. Ugh, he was driving me nuts. I told him he had to be home by 10 p.m. or I'd lock him out. He laughed and said, Are you joking? You're giving me a curfew? Jeez, Amelia, if I didn't know better, I'd think you were jealous or something. Ew, I wasn't jealous, and I told him that. Who did he think he was? As if I'd ever be jealous of that girl. No chance. And yet, I couldn't sleep that night. I kept tossing and turning, and thinking about Jude and that pretty girl. Eventually, I got up and decided to go for a walk. Maybe I just needed some fresh air. But as I walked into the park, there he was. But the girl was nowhere to be seen. Instead, he was sitting on a bench surrounded by stray cats. I walked towards him, and he was as surprised to see me as I was to see him. I asked him why he wasn't out on his hot date. And he said, Oh, the date went well. But I decided to come sleep in the park because I missed your curfew. 
That made me feel so guilty. I was about to justify myself. Then he winked and said, Just kidding. Actually, the date was boring. I did come to the bar and hung out with her for a bit, but I strangely felt out of place, so I made up an excuse to leave. I didn't want to come home too early, though, in case you'd laugh in my face. So here I am. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm kind of over dating and stuff. Wait, am I hearing it wrong? Our playboy chooses to go play with stray cats instead of hanging out with hot girls in fancy bars? Are you really, Jude? I playfully rubbed his head while teasing him. Can't deny, but I actually felt so relieved hearing him say that the date didn't go well and that nothing happened between him and that girl. In fact, I was strangely happy. But what does that mean? Do you wonder if Jude ever actually moved out? Stay tuned for the final part of my story. You wouldn't want to miss it. Hi, it's Amelia again. In the second part of my story, Jude started working in the restaurant, and at first, it was a total disaster. He made a mess everywhere he set foot in. He was driving me totally crazy. But then things started to change. Turns out, he was a pretty talented chef that could help me with housework. And at work, he was becoming quite popular. One day, he got a date with a pretty girl, which annoyed me so much. But then I found him in the park playing with stray cats instead of going on that date. Honestly, that made me feel so happy. Has he really changed? To find out, let's see what happened next. At the restaurant, there was a new waiter called Oliver, who was a year younger than me. Our manager asked me to look after him and show him the ropes. To be honest, I was really impressed with Oliver, as he was such a sweet guy and a fast learner too. Pretty soon, we became closer, and he was like my little brother. Jude, however, did not like him one bit. He was always shouting at Oliver, and even complained that he was careless and clumsy. Um, talk about the pot calling the kettle black. We all knew that Jude was the clumsiest guy in the world. Anyway, Jude's birthday was coming up, and I wanted to buy him a new shirt, seeing as he mainly was wearing old clothes from the donation center. I wanted it to be a surprise, so I asked Oliver to come shopping with me, as Jude and Oliver were pretty much the same size. After buying a beautiful sweatshirt for Jude, Oliver took me home, and as we approached my house, I spotted Jude pacing up and down outside. Was he waiting for someone? When he saw that it was Oliver who gave me a ride, he looked angry and stormed into the house. I quickly said bye to Oliver and ran in, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The table was set with a whole bunch of delicious looking dishes, and there were even candles and flowers. I was so confused. Had he invited a girl over for a date? How dare he? I asked him what it was for, and he said, What day is it today? Did you forget it? Oh, so all of this was for his birthday party? I just laughed and handed him the gift bag. He immediately looked so happy. What a child. But then he suddenly gave me a doubtful look and asked, But what did you do in the afternoon? And with that Oliver guy? I told him I'd asked Oliver to help me go shopping for his birthday. And then I jokingly said, But why are you suddenly so curious? Why, you looked so annoyed upon seeing him. Are you jealous or something? I wasn't expecting what happened next. He suddenly blushed and muttered out, Actually, yes, I like you, Amelia. In fact, I, um, I think I'm in love with you. Whoa! What? I totally froze and didn't know what to say, but just kept looking at him and gasped. He could see I was speechless, so he waved his hands in front of me and said, Hello, Earth to Amelia. Then he continued, Well, Amelia, do you, um, have feelings for me too? Actually, never mind. It's not important. I mean, if you don't, then just forget it, and we can go back to being friends. Oh god, I had never seen him so shy before. His face went red as a tomato, and he kept scratching his head shyly. 
I couldn't help laughing, as, honestly, he looked so cute. So I grabbed his hands, and I couldn't stop the words from pouring out of my mouth. Jude, honestly, I... I like you too. My heart was racing as I said that, and I didn't know what else to say. But suddenly he was hugging me tightly, and then the next moment we were kissing. I was over the moon! I hadn't realized how much I'd wanted that to happen. It felt amazing. From that moment on, we were inseparable. We lived together, worked together, and in our spare time we went camping, hung out in the park, and cycled to watch the sunset. He cared about me so much, and I don't think I'd ever been that happy in my life before. I didn't think life could be that great. Then, one day, while we were cleaning the house, he suddenly called me. Amelia, look! How cute these pictures are! You drew them, right? Wow, you're gifted! I realized he was looking at my box of comic books I'd drawn, which I'd hid under the bed. I felt kind of embarrassed, and told him that I hadn't done any drawings in a while. Then he asked me why I stopped, and I told him about how it had always been my dream to go to art college, but since my mum passed away, I'd had to forget it for a while, and focus on just surviving. Jude suddenly grabbed my hands and said, Honey, let's make this dream happen. I'll help you, okay? I was so touched, and gave him the biggest hug as a response. Jude was my everything, and best of all, he always supported me, and now he encouraged me to follow my dream too. Time went on, and everything was going amazingly, until one day when everything changed. Jude and I were out walking when a luxury black car stopped next to us. A random guy appeared and told us to get in the car. I freaked out and grabbed Jude's arm. What was happening? Were we being kidnapped? There was no way we were getting in the car. But suddenly, the guy said, Jude, this is an order from your parents. Jude looked shocked and said, What do they want? They already kicked me out, so why should I come back? They want to show me how happy they are without me or something? But still, Jude climbed in the car, and I had no choice but to follow him. On the way, there were so many questions running through my head but I just kept quiet. A short while later, we stopped in front of a mansion. This must have been Jude's house. Whoa, I knew he came from a rich family, but not to this extent. Jude held my hand and led me inside, where a couple, probably his parents, was sitting and waiting for us. Jude immediately shouted at them, saying, What do you want? I moved out just like you wanted, so why can't you leave me alone? I had never seen Jude so angry before. It actually scared me. His parents looked calm, though, and they just sat there smiling, and then his mom asked him to calm down and take a seat. The next moment, a maid appeared and brought us some water, but she accidentally spilled some, and she looked mortified. She kept apologizing and wiping it up, but Jude took the tissue and started cleaning it for her. Then he politely said to her, that he would come help her make the pot of tea. Jude's parents looked shocked, but somewhat content, and asked Jude to stay as they had something important to tell him. They couldn't stop grinning. It was so weird. Then they told us their news, which shocked me to my core. Jude actually was their biological son. They'd lied to him because he'd had such a bad attitude and they just wanted to teach him a lesson and force him to grow up a bit. They were sick of doing everything for him, and thought maybe moving out for a while would inspire him to become independent and realize the true value of family and money. What? I couldn't believe what I had heard. They kicked him out to help him grow up? That almost sounded like nonsense, but I guess it had worked, right? He had changed. But how could they come up with such a crazy plan? Of course, Jude wasn't okay with this. In fact, he was furious. What did you say? He screamed. Am I a joke to you or something? His mom tried to calm him down and said, Jude, honey, it was the only way. You were out of control, partying every night and spending all our money. We didn't know what else to do. We've been so worried about you. 
but son, we're so proud of you. Then his dad continued. We've always been keeping an eye on you, son. We saw you working in that restaurant, and we are just so happy you've turned a corner and found this independence. Then she turned to me and said, Amelia, right? Thank you so much, dear. You've looked after our son better than we ever could, and you've helped him so much. I just blushed and said, No, it's Jude who takes care of me, actually. He's been amazing. Jude was squeezing my hand tightly, and I could see how shocked he was. Over the past six months, he'd been on a complete roller coaster. From being abandoned by his parents to discovering that they'd lied to him just to teach him a lesson, I couldn't believe they'd done it. But to be honest, I was grateful. Otherwise, I wouldn't have met him, and he might still be out there dating gold diggers and partying his life away. So I turned to him and said, Babe, I know it hurts right now, but your parents did what they thought was best for you. Plus, thanks to that, you were able to realize who your true friends were, right? The ones who don't take advantage of you because of your money? It took a few moments, but then he gave me a gentle smile, and it was like he finally understood everything. He looked at his parents and said, You guys are crazy, but if you hadn't done something so ridiculous, I'd never have met Amelia. She's made me the man I am today. Without her, and without both of you, I'd never have changed. Gosh, I miss you both. Mom, Dad, thank you. At that, they all burst into tears and started hugging, and I just stood there, the tears pouring down my cheeks too. Watching them reunite like that was so touching, and it really made me miss my own mom. After that, we left, and as we were walking home in silence, Jude suddenly stopped and turned to me. Amelia? Thank you. Thank you for never giving up on me, and for taking care of me. And now, it's my turn. I want you to go to art college and make your dreams a reality. Don't worry about money or anything. Just go make your mom and me proud. I was speechless. I started crying again, and gave him the biggest hug of my life. And guess what? We've moved into a new place downtown and I'm about to start art college next week. Jude is working in his dad's company, and I have a feeling we're going to get engaged soon. Don't tell Jude, but I found the ring box he hid in his wardrobe, though. But I'll surely say yes, and then we can get married after I graduate. It has been a crazy journey, but I wouldn't want it to be any other way. I'm so excited for what's to come. Wish me luck! Rules, rules, rules. Moms sure do love dishing them out, don't they? I'm Nicole, by the way. And you see, my parents divorced when I was eight, so since then, it's just been me and Mom. Mom laid down a bunch of boring rules for me, but I hate following them. I'm 18, and I should be out having fun, right? To me, rules were made to be broken anyway. And trust me, I broke them. Only, this led to my whole life changing. One day, I had an important math test, but I hate math. So, I skipped school and went to the movies with my friends instead. I mean, hello? The last Avengers movie had just come out. No way was I missing it and getting spoilers. Maybe mom would give me a detention for a few weeks, but it's no big deal, right? I arrived home to find mom waiting for me. She glared at me and said, Nicole, I received an interesting phone call from the school. It turns out you haven't been there all day. So, where have you been? Oh no, busted! I just shrugged and replied, Out! It's those friends of yours, isn't it? They are a bad influence. I walked off to my room. Nicole, come back here and talk! She shouted after me, but I ignored her. Then she yelled out, I can't stand you and your childish attitude anymore. You're going to live with your dad. What? She was kicking me out. Wow, 
I didn't expect her to do that. Whatever. I was sick of being moaned at all the time. Surely Dad would be far more understanding. I hadn't seen Dad all that much. In fact, the last time was, um, I think it was my 16th birthday. He was a busy man, as he's the principal at this snooty boy school. And Mom wasn't kidding. She called him up, and that evening, he showed up and loaded my stuff into the trunk of his car. It felt super awkward. I had no idea what to say to him. Then, about an hour into the seriously tedious journey, he said, I completed all the admission procedures for you, so you can start learning in my school tomorrow. What? It was an all-boys school, and I was a girl. Besides, no way was I studying somewhere where my dad was the principal. Panicked, I asked, but dad, isn't it an all-boys school? He said, it used to be, but of late, we've let a few female students in. I can't go there. You're the principal. It'll be so embarrassing. No way. I'll go to another school or something. He gave me a strict look and said, Mom told me all about your behavior in your old school and it's unacceptable. So, you'll be learning at my school so I can keep an eye on you. This is not up for debate. OMG, I can't believe it. He was much stricter than Mom. So reluctantly, I muttered out, Fine, but only if you promise not to tell anyone I'm your daughter. He nodded and said, Okay, if that's what you want. The school was like something out of one of those weird movies. You know, where the characters think they're safe, but then start disappearing one by one. For starters, it was situated on a hill, miles from anything else. Inside, well, it was so masculine browns and grays, and I didn't see one picture in the entire building. The only female thing in the whole place was the girls' restroom. We had to share everything else with the boys. Talk about an inconvenience. The uniform was the same for boys and girls. An oversized shirt and baggy pants and these gross flat shoes. Yuck! During P.E., girls were forced to do the same workout as the boys. Bench presses, push-ups, and playing soccer is not my idea of fun. Ugh! And there wasn't even a cheerleading squad. Then, there were all these extra dumb rules for the girls, like only uniforms are allowed at school. No skirt, no dress, not even jeans. Do the top button of your shirt up. Tie your hair up into this ugly bun. No flirting with the boys. Yep, that was actually a rule. Can you believe this place? I didn't know whether this was a high school or a prison. I thought this was bad, but I soon realized this school had a major problem. Maybe it's because this school was originally boys only, but man, this place didn't appreciate girls at all. Once in a history class, the teacher asked us what year Abraham Lincoln became president. Easy. But before I could even raise my hand, she continued, this question seemed too hard for girls. So do any of the boys know the answer? What? How could she say that? What was with her male chauvinist attitude? This put me in a bad mood. So during dinner, I decided to moan to dad about it. He needed to know how ridiculous his school was. So I told him how I hated his dumb rules and how sexist the teachers were. He glared at me and told me that there weren't enough girls at the school to warrant a separate uniform. Moreover, if girls dressed up, it would only cause distractions for the boys. As for the history teacher, it was just because boys often have larger knowledge than girls on this matter, so maybe she just didn't want to embarrass the girls in case they couldn't give out the right answer. Huh, what kind of argument was this? It wasn't the olden days. Jeez, these oldies needed to get with the decade. Okay, fine. I'll prove to the whole school and all the teachers that there weren't only boys here. The next day, I gathered all the girls from my class. Um, in fact, there were only two of them, Angela and Carly, and we met up in the only girly place, the girls' restroom. Then I told them, Hey girls, welcome to our club, The Doll. I think it's about time we fought for our rights and presence in this school. As girls matter too, right? At first, they both seemed worried. I get it, they didn't want to get in trouble, but I soon managed to convince them that it'd be fine, fun even, so they came around and agreed. First up, 
It was time to do something about this awful uniform. We tied up our shirts to expose our waists, and I helped the others put subtle makeup on, so our skin looked like it had a natural glow to it. Then, we all put glittery hair accessories and colorful scrunchies in our hair to jazz up our updos. Carly looked in the mirror and said, Okay, maybe our uniform isn't so bad. And we all burst out laughing. Now, it was time to make an entrance. We all walked along the corridor together. All the boys and girls turned around to look at us with admiring eyes and open mouths. One boy even dropped his stack of books on the floor, and another one walked into his locker. Ha! The charm of girls was absolutely irresistible, right? Soon, we became a popular group around the school. The boys wanted to talk to us, and girls from other classes also joined our group, and I showed them how to style up their uniforms. It's great, right? Yep. There's a problem. The teachers were old fogies who didn't appreciate style. One day, before class, one teacher came up to me and my friends and accused us of ruining the dignity of the uniform and of exerting negative influences on other students. So I told her, we aren't violating any of the school's previous rules. We wear the uniform, we keep our top button done up, and we have the regulation hairstyle. Dressing up is a girl's prerogative. Besides, if boys are distracted, it's their fault, not ours. So you can't blame us for that. After that, I seemed to become a thorn in the side of all the teachers. In every subject, I would always be asked to answer the most difficult questions. And, of course, I didn't know the right answer. I mean, nobody knew it. And then they would give me a gloating look. Ugh, how childish they were. Another time, I was in a lunch queue, and when it was my turn, I chose barbecue chicken drumsticks, as they're my favorite. However, to my surprise, the canteen service said there was no chicken left, then put this weird oatmeal slop on my plate. Ew! I could see there were loads of chicken left, so why was she being so unreasonable? I skipped the gross slop, so as soon as I got home from school, I was so hungry, so I made myself a huge bowl of noodles. Dad saw me devouring the food, then smiled and asked, Has causing trouble at school all day made you that hungry? In between my mouthfuls of food, I told him what had happened with the teacher, and in the canteen. He just smiled and said it was because I was too stubborn. What kind of an excuse was that? I mean, when was starving students a good idea? The next morning, I drowsily walked into class and sat down at my desk. That's when I realized I'd forgotten my phone. Well, this totally sucked, so I moaned to Angela. These teachers make my life a misery, and now I don't even have my phone. Today is going to be a long one. Suddenly, someone knocked on my desk. I looked up and saw my dad, aka the principal, standing there in front of me. I was so surprised that before I could say anything, he said, Hey, Cupcake, you left your phone at home. Oh, and I brought you breakfast, as you know how grumpy you get when you're hungry. Then he put my phone and a sandwich on my desk, stroked my hair, then left. What was he doing? Did he forget his promise? Needless to say, my classmates looked shocked. Angela stared at me and said, Huh? The principal is your dad? Unbelievable! Why didn't you tell us? I sat there open-mouthed. This was the most awkward thing ever. Thanks a lot, Dad. But little did I know, that was just the start of a new chapter of craziness. Things were about to get even worse. And oh boy, you wouldn't want to miss out on that. Hey, my name's Kelly, and I'm so excited to start high school. Yes, I get it. Most kids my age feel the same way. But for them, it's all about proms, later curfews, getting their own car, and having a cute boyfriend or girlfriend. Okay, so those things sound great too. But the thing I'm most excited about is joining a cool club. A music one to be exact. You see, since I was little, I had this dream of being part of an awesome club like in Glee. Finally, school started. I was so eager to dive into this new environment, but it took me a few days till I could get a clue of where the music club office was or how to apply for it. 
No one seemed to know, to be honest. Or maybe it's because I've only been asking freshmen who were just as lost as me. Anyway, after a lot of pacing the hallways, I found a room that said Music Club on the door. Well, it actually said M6 Club, as the U was missing, but it had to be it, right? I couldn't contain my excitement. I took a deep breath and pushed the door open. Hello, everyone. I... What was this? I took one quick scan around the room, as there's not much to look at anyway. There was a rusty guitar in the corner, a dusty drum set, and some rackety old chairs. Three girls were sitting separately. One girl greeted me shyly, so I went and sat next to her. She said, Hi, I'm Daisy. I play guitar and sometimes the bass. I love ballads, you know. Then this one girl who was painting her nails interrupted her. Ballads are the worst. She rolled her eyes. But luckily for you guys, I sing a mean pop tune. Daisy turned to me and whispered, That's Mia, and I'm not really sure if she can really sing though. The only other girl in the room had her headphones in and was dancing weirdly. Daisy told me she was called Jill and she could kind of play the drums. I looked around the room of misfits once again and I'm not gonna lie, I was really disappointed. This wasn't what I imagined. I told myself it was okay and that more kids might join up later on in the term. I mean, it wasn't the easiest club to find so it might take some time. That's all. Besides, this was my chance to claim leadership here. So, without wasting any time, I gathered them all up for a little discussion. Then I started with introducing myself. Hey guys, I'm Kelly. I started play organ since 8. I've been trying to learn to compose songs too. There was not much reaction except for Daisy's shy claps. I then continued, So, we should have a team leader, right guys? Let's cast our votes. Everyone will have a minute to talk about why they should be the leader. Daisy nodded her head, Mia rolled her eyes and mouth, whatever, and Jill, well, she still had her headphones on, so I took the lead. Okay, so I'll start then. I think as the president of this club, I will... Mia cut my words. Fine, you're it, whatever. Who else votes for Kelsey? Hands up. I started saying, uh, my name is Kel... Mia raised her hand and then shook it out so her nails could dry. Jill raised her hand even though I don't think she actually knew what she was voting for. And Daisy raised hers while shyly adding, I think you'll be a great leader, Kelly. I'm too shy anyway, so you'll have my full support. Well, okay, that was easy, so I'm a club president now. That will look so good on my portfolio. <laughs> now, I will bring back this club from oblivion. We will revive it. I'll have my own high school musical. I was actually excited. As soon as I got home, I went through my song list and picked out some good ones. Then I texted the girls to bring their instruments in the following day. But then at practice, all my dreams came crashing down. Daisy was right. Mia's singing voice was terrible. But she couldn't play an instrument, so I had to let her take center stage, which she loved, as she clearly liked the spotlight. Light. But then Jill folded her arms and refused to play. She can't stand there. She's covering me entirely. The drum is the soul of the song. Duh. I should be center. This annoyed Mia and they started bickering. I left them to it and went over to Daisy. Please tell me you can sing, can you? We gotta do something. Mia couldn't be the only vocalist. We'll be doomed. Daisy looked stunned. She shook her head continuously. No, no, I can't do that. It's already such a big challenge for me to play in public. I can't sing. I tried convincing her that she could sing backing vocals with me, and she'd be fine. In the end, she agreed, but only if she could wear a mask on stage. What? Fine, I shouted. Fine. Guys, Daisy, it's okay. You can put a mask on while performing until whenever you feel comfortable. And you two, no need to fight. I'm sure the stage is big enough for you both to be in the spotlight. This is just a practice session. No one is here to see you. Just put up with it for a bit. Then when we're on stage, we'll figure it out. They all mellowed down a bit. Thankfully. Jeez, talk about draining. So. Over the next few weeks, we got to work and OMG, what a clash of personalities. I felt like I was the glue holding us all together and it was so exhausting. Mia wanted to practice in the morning, but Jill wanted to meet in the afternoon, so I suggested doing a morning one day and an afternoon the next practice day. Ugh. Then there was a song choice. Mia and Daisy were keen on a Taylor Swift song, but Jill tried to rock it up and made it sound awful. I compromised by letting her have a drum solo in the middle of it. They were hard work, but the strange thing is, I was actually beginning to like them all. Mia gave us all style tips and even let me borrow her lip gloss. Jill always recommended us some really interesting Netflix series to watch. 
Daisy made us homemade snacks to munch on during practice while I helped them out with their homework. Besides all the bickering, there were definitely friendships blossoming there. The problem is our band sucked. We'd only performed twice during break time at the school basketball game, but no one even noticed us, not while the dance team was performing. They were so in sync, and this one kid could do the splits. I mean, how could we compete with that? Then finally, the prom came. This was our big shot. We prepared a lot and practiced hard for it. We even went picking out prom dresses together, thinking about how glorious we would all look on stage performing in these gorgeous dresses. Before our performance was the dance teams, so we couldn't set up our instruments beforehand since they said they would be in their way. So as soon as they finished, we had to rush on stage with our instruments. Trust me, this is not as easy as it sounds, especially when all of us, well, apart from Jill, were in long puffy dresses. Talking about Jill, she chose to wear this cape instead and it kept on getting tangled up and messing her rhythm. Daisy was distracted by the lights, so she messed up all the notes, and me, while I was playing, suddenly my keyboard stand collapsed. I guess due to being in a rush, it wasn't properly set up earlier. I had to improvise and immediately sat down to continue to play, and then Mia was too into it and sang off-key while dancing, which made her out of breath. It was a literal disaster. Seriously, it was so bad the baffled crowd gave a mixture of chuckles and amazed gasps. This is not how I envisioned it to go. Afterward, we walked in silence back to the music room to drop off our instruments. Then Jill said, I told you the prom dresses were a bad idea. Not only did you sound awful, but you look stupid too. Mia was fuming as she replied, says the girl in the stupid cape. Since when has the Count Dracula look ever been good? Jill said, at least I have talent. You're tone deaf. I am not. It's not my fault I have terrible backing singers. Yeah, right, Mia. Was that what you call singing? All you did was dance and scream. This ain't a nightclub. Mia fought back. My fault? What did I do? It's all because all you played so awful, so I had to try my best to stir up the crowd. And you, she turned to me, were you on stage to chill? Who on earth sits while performing? Me? Now you're blaming me? You were the one who set up the keyboard stand for me. It's because you didn't do it properly. Lucky for you, my keyboard is still okay. Never mind, guys. Let's not... Hey, you guys should have taken care of your own instruments. Don't blame me. Even if I sang off-key, it was because you guys played terribly. Who chose this song? It was too hard for us. Okay, let's stop blaming each other and focus on figuring out how to improve ourselves or else I doubt that the school will let us perform in any event ever again. Again, isn't this enough to call it a day? This stupid club shouldn't even exist. I'm out of here. I quit. Me too. What a waste of time. Bye, losers. A ditto. Um, sorry, Kelly, but I can't do this anymore. I could only stand there and shout as they walked through the door. Guys, are you kidding me right now? Guys! Okay, then just leave. To hell with this club. My Glee club dreams were over. Yet I just stayed there wondering what I was meant to do now. This was the worst day ever. But it was okay. I joined another club. Maybe the dance club. I mean, I couldn't dance all that well, but I could learn. Couldn't I? The Monday after, we all went to the club room to grab our stuff. The four of us didn't say a word to each other. It was super frosty. Then out of nowhere, this guy stepped in. Well, not just any guy. Cole Henderson, the hottest boy in freshman year. At first, I thought he was lost, but then he said, Hey guys, is this the room for music club? Hey, Kelly here. So, my dreams of being a part of an amazing school band, well, they weren't going so well. After a catastrophic prom performance, we all decided to go our separate ways. At least, it was until Cole, the hottest boy in freshman year, walked into the room. There he was, smiling in the doorway and holding his electric guitar. So, Joe glared at him and said, What do you want? He replied, Um, 
I know there isn't any member recruitment going right now, but I'd like to join the band if you guys... I was about to tell him that there was no band anymore, but Mia spoke first. Yes, sure, of course. Then she rushed over to him and dragged him across the room. Daisy looked puzzled and said, but weren't we already disbanded? Then Jill said, Daisy, you must have misheard us. We said we wanted to expand our brand, not disband. Is this for real? Wow, it's amazing what a cute guy can do. So I just nodded and then said, um, okay then, I guess. Welcome to the band. Okay, so think about it. This guy might not be in any way musically gifted. Not that it mattered. Because of him, there was currently still a band. And surely girls would come and see us now, even if we sucked. I mean, he's Cole Henderson. For Valentine's Day, he got at least 40 cards. They all fell out of his locker. It was crazy. So, we started practicing. And wow, it turned out Cole had an amazing voice. And he could play electric guitar like a pro. Mia even volunteered to step down and be backing vocals. What was going on? And Daisy was happy not to have to sing anymore and just concentrate on playing bass. Having Cole around solved a lot of our problems. The prom incident was completely forgotten. No more Mia and Jill fighting for the spotlight, but there was one thing. I knew they both had crushes on Cole. I mean, it was so obvious. Mia dressed up for every practice. I mean, she always makes an effort with her appearance, but glittery dresses on a normal school day? That was so over the top. Then there was Jill. Whenever Cole was around, she was so polite to everyone and complimented us on everything. I knew they were low-key competing with each other, as one time Jill's drumstick disappeared, and while she was looking for them, Mia went over to Cole and felt his arm and asked him if he'd been working out. Then another time, Mia's lipstick was replaced with a black one, which she applied before practice. Horrified, she ran into the bathroom to wash it off, and Jill went over to Cole and asked him to teach her how to play guitar while we waited for Mia. The band was certainly eventful, but I had to admit, I was enjoying myself. We even decided on a name, Rouge September. This named after three of us have birthdays in September, and Mia and Cole's favorite color is red, but Mia insisted on using the French word for it to be more edgy. Yep, it took us hours to come up with that, but I like it. I like it a lot. We really started to improve and had lots of fun doing it. Then Cole suggested we play One Direction's What Makes You Beautiful at this upcoming school concert. I loved the song, so I immediately agreed. Even Jill did, and I know she hates One Direction. So we rehearsed like crazy and everyone showed up on time and worked really hard. Yes, Mia and Jill's low-key competing continued, but whatever. At least we were all there practicing. The night of the performance arrived and I was mixed of excited and scared. Cole helped me set up my keyboard stand and I noticed that he kept on giving me funny looks. Before I could ask him what was up, it was time to perform. We were so amazing and everyone was cheering for us. Then the song ended and Cole started to talk into the microphone. Um, thanks guys. You were awesome. But um, there's something I want to say. Then he looked at me. Kelly... I just want to let the whole world know that you're the most beautiful girl and I really enjoyed getting to know you for the past few months and well, I'd love it if you could be my girlfriend. What was that? Was he out of his mind? Since when did he have feelings for me? The crowd went crazy, screaming and cheering while I froze there. I could see Jill and Mia were looking at me with fiery eyes. Cole tried to walk towards me and say something, but the microphone didn't work. Jill had just unplugged it and Mia charged towards me screaming, You traitor! Cole is mine! Cole jumped in front of me to protect me from her. Then Daisy suddenly burst into tears, like hysterically. We all looked at each other immediately knew, Oh boy, she must have had a crush on Cole too. The next thing we knew, a teacher walked on stage and shooed us off. That's when I noticed the whole crowd gapping at us and laughing. Jeez, this was so humiliating. Worse still, we walked off stage and the school director said, So, you think that was funny, do you? Let's see if you're still laughing in detention. Then he locked us all in a classroom and said we could only leave when we understood what we did wrong and resolved everything. There's no way I wanted to talk to any of them about this mess. 
Thanks to them, I look like a fool. And now I had detention while I hadn't even done anything. It was some five minutes of awkward silence until Cole shyly started. Okay, we can't just sit here in silence for however long. Look, I like Kelly and the concert was a great opportunity for me to confess my feelings. That's all. Was he serious right now? This was the last thing he needed to say right now. Jill suddenly fueled up again and turned to me yelling, You've been seducing Cole even though you knew I liked him? Cole tried to chime in. Guys, this is not how it works. Mia also came at me. You don't deserve to be our leader. You're so sneaky. Then there went Daisy, bursting out crying again. Jill tried to comfort her while Mia said, Another victim of beauty, huh? Daisy stuttered through tears. Why, why do you get everything? You got to be the leader. You got the cute boy. You get all the attention. Jill rolled her eyes. Yeah, so you're the lamest leader. So lame, my dog could do better. That was it. I'd had enough of these selfish people. I couldn't hold back anymore and screamed at them. Oh, yeah? You think being a leader is easy? I guess you guys have never spared your precious seconds to think about how much I've done for you all. I got you a platform for the drum, a freaking mask, a dumb rhinestone microphone. You asked for it, I delivered it. It's all because I love this band. I want to have an actual band, a successful music club. I want to leave a legacy here at this school to make our high school years meaningful. But all I'm getting is hate and some selfish friends that I don't know if I could call friends anymore. I didn't know Cole liked me. In fact, I had no idea. I guess I was being too busy trying to keep this club together to notice. But no more. I'm done. I was out of breath after that. And when I finished, I saw them all looking at me stunned. Detention or no detention, I grabbed my stuff and I was about to leave when Mia timidly said, Um, sorry. I guess it's true. I really haven't thought. Jill added, yeah, you should have told us earlier. I'm sorry. I didn't know this really meant that much to you. Daisy wiped her tears. Yes, and please don't say that, Kelly. Of course. We're still friends. Please forgive us. Cole was about to say something too. Then Mia quickly covered his mouth. No, no, kid. This is our business. Now, Kelly, what do you say? Could you please take us back as your adorable friends and bandmates? Then, all three of them gathered up and looked at me with puppy eyes, trying to make me smile. I tried to keep my straight face, but eventually, I burst out laughing and hugged them all. Then Daisy cried again, which set all of us off. Even Jill! Cole was sitting there looking at us oddly. When Mia noticed this, she pointed at him and said, That boy was the one who broke us apart! Don't understand why we were so swooned over him! I wish I knew you were trouble when you walked in! Oh my god, did you just quote Taylor Swift? You know it's Taylor Swift, <laughs> Daisy laughed. But you're right, I'm so over him now. Yep, stupid crush, Jill agreed. I waved Cole over to join the group hug as I said, Guys, remember that Cole was the one who saved us when we were on the verge of disbandment. He deserves some credit. What do you mean on the verge? We were already disbanded, Mia joked. Then Jill added, wow, we've been through it all. Now I guess we can get over everything together too, right guys? I said, yes, that's the spirit. Now on three, one, two, three, Rouge September, let's go. You thought this was the end to it? Nah, not quite. Later that day when I was walking back home, Cole ran after me. Hey Kelly, look, I'm sorry. I had no idea what this club meant to you. Please forget all about my confession and let's be friends. I want to help you with the ban and everything. I smiled at him. I'd like that. So, peace was restored and as for Rouge September, well, we're still going. Who knows, one day we might be the greatest band on earth. But yeah, having close friends, being together every day and playing music together is enough for me. But then, something weird started happening. I found myself smiling when I looked at Cole and noticing how cute he was when he tuned his guitar. Did I like, like him? No, it couldn't be, could it? I mean, if I did that, then that meant I had to confess to him this time around, right? But here's a thought, it surely won't be on stage. Oops, still not it. Wow, why do they have an entire room just for shoes? 
That's mental, I muttered to myself as I closed the door. I swear, that was like the twentieth door I'd opened. This place was insane. I had no idea which door would lead to my bedroom. To be honest, I've never been anywhere this lavish before in my entire life. Okay, it's now down to this door or that one over there. Wish me luck. But as I reached for the doorknob, I heard a voice. Hey, what prank you trying to pull on me again? I caught you red-handed this time, Gabby. Startled, I turned around and... Oh, wow. There was this super cute guy standing there, looking so smug with himself. So this must be Jaden, the annoying big brother that Gabby had told me about. Only he didn't seem annoying to me. But right, I needed to stay in character. So I replied, um, yeah, guess I was just too busy thinking about stuff that I didn't watch where I was going. Take it easy, bro. Then I immediately fled to the other room while Jaden watched me in confusion. Phew, that was a close one. And wow, was Gabby a princess or something? She lived in a literal palace. Look at her room. Oh, you must be wondering. Yes, I'm not Gabby. I'm Nancy. So how come Jaden didn't realize that I was not his sister? Now, let me tell you. That's one wild story. I was just a normal teenager, living my peaceful life in the Missouri countryside. My family doesn't have a lot of money, so I worked part-time in a nearby diner, so I could save up for college. Yeah, it wasn't perfect, but I knew I was lucky to have my loving family. They're my everything. So, anyway, it wasn't uncommon for schools from St. Louis to arrange trips out here, to show the kids what country life was like. And on days like those, the diner could get pretty hectic, and today was no exception. By the time my shift finished, I was a tired, sweaty mess, so I took the scenic route home to unwind. That's when I heard this girl screaming for help. She must have slipped and fell into this ditch. I quickly found a big branch to help pull her out of there. Then she brushed the dirt off her as she said, Thanks. But as she looked up at me, OMG! We both jumped up in such a fright that we almost stumbled back into the ditch! She looked exactly like me. I pinched myself to check I wasn't hallucinating or something. I mean, I was super exhausted from work. We stared at each other gormlessly for a bit. Then she suddenly reached out her hand and slapped me! Ouch! I raised my eyebrows at her, and she just grinned back. Oops, sorry. Just checking this isn't a dream. That's when I saw it. Her bracelet. The pendant on it was a strange shape. A strange shape like mine. I held out my wrist to slot my bracelet's pendant into hers. And it formed a butterfly. What's more, carved on the back of it was our birthday. November 3rd. Oh my god. No wonder why. I always asked my parents why they bought me such an ugly bracelet. Turns out it was two halves of a hole? She shrieked. So, do you think we're... twins? I was still in shock, but I managed to mutter out, Must be. She excitedly clapped her hands together, then pulled me into a hug. She said her name was Gabby, and her field trip was so dull that she wandered off, then ended up lost and stuck. Then I told her about my loving family, and she told me about her city life. I thought her life sounded awesome, but she didn't think so. Nah, it's seriously so boring over there. I just want a happy, drama-free life like yours. It makes sense now. I see why my parents love my brother more than me. I'm obviously adopted. But hey, at least you have your friends and get to go to a good school. School? That's the worst part. I hate it. Then she paused and turned to me. Nancy, I have an amazing idea. How about we switch places? This was crazy. An hour ago, I thought I was an only child. And now I was staring at my twin. Gabby seemed adamant switching places was the best idea ever, as I'd get a taste of the city life while also helping her ace her upcoming exams. This did sound tempting. I mean, 
It wasn't every day your long-lost twin appeared and offered you the adventure of a lifetime, right? We didn't have much time to discuss it anymore, so we quickly switched clothes, phones, and further instructions about anything else would be discussed later over the phone. Then I showed her the way to my house, and I headed toward the crowd of noisy students lining up for the bus back to the city. Suddenly, a girl tapped me on the shoulder and in an annoyed tone said, Er, where have you been? Blonde hair, a pink hairband, and wearing a choker with a heart pendant on it? Yep, this must be Katie, Gabby's best friend. I followed her onto the bus, then yawned and told her I was exhausted. I feigned sleeping for the duration of the journey back so she wouldn't start any more convos with me. So after that, things went by smoothly. Until I got home and didn't know where I normally sleep at. But it's okay now, as I'm safe in Gabby's bedroom. The butler did knock on the door to ask me to come down for dinner. I know, the fact they have a butler is crazy. But I just lied that I'd eaten loads on the field trip. There was no time for food now. I needed to learn as much as I could about these people. I searched her room and looked through her yearbooks, family photos, anything. I thought I was ready to go to school as Gabby tomorrow. But, well, as if it was that simple. The next morning, I nervously came downstairs to go to school. And of course, I had to face the entire family now. Upon seeing me, the small talks all came flying at me. How was yesterday's trip, dear? I managed to mumble out, Um, it, it was all right. Then suddenly, a hand rubbed my hair. Hey, I'm taking your PB&J, okay? You won't eat it anyway. I turned to look and saw him grinning at me before he headed outside. Oh gosh, I thought I'd melted into a puddle. He's so cute. I just wanted to follow him, but then Dad cleared his throat. Gabriella, can we please make it a day free of complaints from your teachers? Oh God, Gabby, what had you possibly done? I gulped back, nodded in response, then hurried out of there. I awkwardly lingered in front of the mansion. This was the spot where the bus dropped me off yesterday, so hope this was how it worked. Then suddenly, a scary-looking guy pulled up on the other side of the street and yelled at me. Babe, what are you doing? Get in! Me? I was his babe? Oh, so he was Dylan, my sister's boyfriend. I walked over and reluctantly climbed on the back seat. Hey! What's wrong? Are you still mad at me for letting you go on the field trip alone? Come on, you said it was okay. I didn't know what to say to him, so I stayed quiet and stared out the window. Come on, babe, I mean, this is dumb. We both know how sitting in the back always gives you travel sickness. Gosh, I really needed to say something to shut this guy up, huh? No, it's totally fine between us. Um, it's just that I feel a bit under the weather. I need a little rest, that's all, and it's more spacey here. Well, that seemed to quiet him down, but I kept on catching him giving me odd looks in the rearview mirror. Look at him! Ugh! Gabby and I might be twins, but our tasting guys couldn't be any more different. Dylan looked like the bad boy type. Green hair, a nose ring, and drove some flashy sports car, while I prefer sweet and funny guys, like Jaden but I didn't want to accidentally ruin my sister's relationship either. So when we got to school, I had to give him a peck on the cheek to make sure that we were cool. Yuck, his cologne stank. Luckily, I met Katie in the parking lot, so I followed her to class. Things were going great, at least they were, until we got to Spanish class. The teacher, Mrs. Harrison, gave me this judgy look right from the moment I walked in. Turns out, Gabby hadn't handed in her homework, and she spent the whole of the last session painting her nails. Mrs. Harrison demanded to check my homework today. Well, of course, I didn't know I had homework. So, in a disappointed voice, she said, Gabby, it's been two years and you still don't know how to conjugate any single verb. Are you proud of that? Suddenly, I heard Katie whisper, but at least she knows how to dress, Mrs. Harrison. Your sweater looks like it should have been thrown out two years ago. Then some of the class giggled. Oh my god, Katie? 
That was so rude. But luckily, the teacher didn't hear that. I quickly apologized to Mrs. Harrison and told her to just give me a pop quiz to make up for my missing homework. She did. And to her, and the whole class's total surprise, I slayed all the questions. After class, I told Katie that her comment about Mrs. Harrison wasn't cool. Laughing, she replied, Jeez, why are you so uptight today? But on seeing my unfaltering expression, she quickly changed the subject. You've still got to help me with the plan, okay? You promised. She winked at me. What? What plan? In confusion, I faked a smile at Katie. Oh, don't you worry, girl. I got it all set. That night, Gabby called me and we updated each other on our first day. Things went better than expected. Apparently, she loved it there, and she felt so warm and connected with mom and dad, and she was sure that they were our real parents. She also enjoyed feeding the chickens and apple picking in the backyard. However, she did almost get me fired from work as she didn't know how to use the oven, but she managed to charm her way out of it. I told her how I'd handled the Dylan situation and made peace with Mrs. Harrison. But, oh, Gabby, Katie did mention to me about some plan? What is it? Oh, yeah, I promised to set her up with Jaden. I guess you'll have to carry it out for me now. My heart sank as I said, Jaden? As in, your brother Jaden? Yeah, now not biologically. It's no wonder I just couldn't get along with him. Not like us, right? I forced a laugh and changed the subject. But, oh no, Jaden was far more suited to me than rebellious Katie. But, okay, this was Gabby's life, so I needed to make sure I didn't mess it up. And maybe, when this twinning truth broke out, I'd get my chance with Jaden. For now, we agreed to continue living each other's lives. I suppose it was pretty easy, seeing as all Gabby seemed to do was hang out with her friends and avoid doing her homework. The only part I didn't like was setting Katie up with Jaden. And that's when things got complicated. Will we ever tell everyone the truth? Or this life swap is too much fun to stop? Stay tuned for part two to find out. Hey, it's me again, Nancy. Only, I'm currently pretending to be my long-lost identical twin, Gabby. After a chance meeting with her, she was now living my life in the countryside, and I was living hers in the city. One snag, I was crushing on her adoptive brother, Jaden. But Gabby's best friend, Katie, also wanted me to set her up with him. What a bummer, huh? Katie insisted that I convince Jaden to tutor her on Saturday. The excuse being she had some super important physics exam. So, with my most enthusiastic voice, I went to ask him to help her. And surprisingly, Jaden found it a great idea. You should sit in too. Dad will be so stoked if you manage to get something above an F next time. Oh wow, Jaden is just the sweetest. I don't get why Gabby complains about him. So, as planned, at 3pm sharp, Katie appears at our door wearing this flashy off-the-shoulder dress that would have best suited a nightclub or something. Upon seeing her, Jaden chuckled and said, Oh, what's the occasion? Katie blushed and smiled back, but before she could speak up, I chimed in. Katie's afraid your physics class would be too boring, so she wanted to add some colors. Jaden laughed and told us to follow him upstairs to study. Katie obviously wasn't happy with my ad lib, she frowned at me and mouthed, What the heck was that? And I just gave her two big thumbs up and acted as if I was being an amazing wing girl. We sat around a desk and Jaden started to explain physics stuff. This was so easy, but Katie kept leaning in closer to him and asked him some dumb questions while playing with her hair. I swear, the hair twirling was an act, but her not understanding any of these symbols was real. I soon got tired of playing dumb, so I jumped in and explained it instead, and Jaden looked impressed. Okay, this was fun. Katie shot me a dirty look. Gabby, don't you have a manicure at five? Then she kicked my leg under the desk. Stay, you're racing it. Jaden grinned at me. Those nails can wait. You're only one F away from dad's tantrum. 
and I don't want to witness that. Then he turned to Katie. You should encourage each other to do better. Then we went back to the lesson. I could tell how furious Katie was, as she was crumpling up the edges of a page on her notepad. I was secretly celebrating my little win. Then my phone rang. It was Dylan, and he sounded kind of mad. Oh my god. I'd totally forgotten that Gabby had told me about today's big date at a fancy restaurant for their sixth month anniversary. Oops. I didn't want to go on a date with Dylan and leave Jaden here with Katie. Ugh. But I couldn't let Gabby down, so I quickly changed outfits, grabbed the gift she'd bought for him, then left. I arrived at the restaurant to see him lingering about outside, looking sulky. So I had to make up some excuse. Sorry, honey. I just wanted to look good for you. Then gave him a kiss on the cheek. Yuck. He was wearing even more cologne this time. Inside, I feigned interest in the menu so I wouldn't have to talk to him. I didn't want to mess my sister's relationship up, but I had nothing in common with this guy. Suddenly, his phone rang out. Hang on. Was that a Youngblood song? Sorry, babe. I forgot to put it back on silent. I love Youngblood. His new song is so catchy. We should make a TikTok to it. He gave me an odd look. But you always hate this kind of music. Thinking quick, I replied, I guess your music tastes must be rubbing off on me. He looked extra happy, then took my hand, which startled me a little, but that was a good icebreaker. I felt much more comfortable talking to him after that. Okay, so regardless of his clothes and hair, he was actually a pretty sweet guy, and it was obvious that he really cares for Gabby. We had a lot of fun, and then he dropped me off at home. And obviously, like any couple that had been dating for months, he went in for a kiss. And I started to panic again. For your information, I haven't had my first kiss yet. And I didn't want it to be with my sister's boyfriend. I gave him a kiss on the cheek again, then fake coughing. I told him the cold the other day hadn't worn off yet. And I didn't want to pass it to him. Phew. Luckily, he bought it. Then he just gave me a kiss on the forehead and wished me good night. Phew, it was such a day. I threw myself onto the bed and was about to call Gabby for an update when Katie called. She moaned at me for being unhelpful on her date. Then she demanded I rearrange another one to make it up to her. So, another tutor session with math? I suggested, with zero effort whatsoever. No thanks, I'm tired of it. Gabby, you literally did no help today. This is the chance to redeem yourself. I trust you. Then she hung up, leaving me at a dead end. So I phoned Gabby for advice, and she told me to book them at a date at Jaden's favorite restaurant or something. Then, Gabby must have noticed how unenthusiastic I sounded. She added, Oh, and Nancy, I know Katie loves to do the whole mean girl act, but underneath it all, she's actually pretty sensitive and has always been a good friend to me. So please make this work for her. <sighs> okay. So I needed to be less Nancy and more Gabby, as Katie deserved to have a loyal, caring best friend. So I made a reservation, sent Katie the time and place, then told Jaden about it. And now I just sit back and let them meet up and flirt and... I mean, there's nothing I could do. It's not like I was going to stalk them or anything. Um. But yeah, that's exactly what I ended up doing. I didn't mean to, but the thought of them being together just driving me nuts. So there I was, strategically placing myself behind a pillar in the restaurant, trying to stalk them. Then all of a sudden, someone threw an apron at me. Ahem. What are you doing? The place is packed and you decide to just stand here flirting with the pillar or what? Get to work! I turned to see the waiter who had just talked to me rush off to take another order. Wait a minute, did he just think I was a waitress because my shirt looked similar to their uniform? If so, then let the fun begin. I quickly put on the apron, lowered my hat, and hovered around the kitchen window, trying to find Jaden and Katie's order. There it was. Now, let's add extra spice on Katie's ravioli. It didn't take long for their food to come out and Katie started coughing like crazy, having a taste of her food. Ha! But joke on me, 
That only gave her a platform to act up and make Jaden take better care of her. He even held a forkful of his steak out to her, and I watched her lean in and eat it. Ugh! Later on, when the waiter walked away with their dessert order, I waited for a sec before running after him and said, Hey, Table 17 just asked to change the chocolate cake to peanut butter cheesecake. They just told me. Then he just fixed the order without a doubt. Katie seemed to hate peanut butter so much. She made sure to let everybody know that every time we went to eat something. Well, Jaden loved PB&J, so by this way, he would see what an annoying picky eater she was. After that, I lingered at a corner, pretending to wipe tables to stay out of sight, while keeping an eye on them. And as expected, Katie jumped off her seat and started yelling at the waiter after taking a sniff of the cake. The waiter looked puzzled, then looked around, searching for something. Suddenly, he pointed at me. Hey, are you sure about the order? You were the one who told me that they switched the cakes. I froze as all the eyes were now on me. Gabby, I can't believe this. Why are you ruining this for me? Katie charged towards me. You! You know how bad my peanut allergy is. I could have ended up in the hospital. I don't know you anymore, Gabby. Then she stormed off. Oh my god, I really didn't know that. I didn't mean to hurt Katie that way. Jaden then quickly paid the bill, then grunted at me. We're going home. He didn't say a single word to me on the way home. He just went straight to his room and slammed the door. I stood outside of his room and kept on apologizing. He finally opened it and yelled at me. What's up with you? You've reached new levels of weird lately? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I thought you'd finally changed for the better. But, well, turns out you're still the same spoiled brat you always were. Just do whatever you want without a second thought. No, it's not like that. It was an accident. I... Oh, really? Then what is it like? It's like... I have a crush on you, Jaden. I just can't bear seeing you with other girls. What? Are you crazy? This better not be some kind of prank, Gabby. You're my sister. No, I'm not. I'm not Gabby. I'm her twin, Nancy. And FYI, both Gabby and I aren't your biological sister either. Jaden looked at me jaw dropped. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder. Gabby, what did you just say? It was mum. She looked so perplexed, and tears were already welling up. We had an emergency family meeting, where I told them all about my chance meeting with Gabby, switching places, and how she believed she was adopted as they favored Jaden over her. So now she's with our biological parents in the countryside. To say they looked shocked was an understatement. Then Mum took my hand and said, Sweetie, it's time you learned the truth. Then she told me how 12 years ago, during a family picnic, I wandered off and got lost. They tried searching for me, but to no result. But now, here I was. I'd found my way back to them. They also mentioned that it wasn't that they loved Jaden more, they were stricter with Gabby because she was rebellious when it came to her studies. It pains me to know she thinks we love her less. Dad sighed, then Mum turned to me, cupped my face with her hands. Oh God, my poor Abby. I can't believe you're here with us now. Abby? So my real name was Abigail? I choked up. Things then got emotional. There was a lot of hugging and sobbing. It was an emo overload. So let's go pick up your sister, shall we? Dad patted on my shoulder and told everyone to get changed. Then we hit the road right away. It may have already been 10 p.m., but this couldn't wait. On the ride, I started to calm down and let the truth get to me as I took one good look at everyone. So these were my real parents? And that meant Jaden was my real brother too? Man! Now that's embarrassing! I pulled up my phone to give Gabby a heads up that we were coming, and didn't forget to add a, You are so not going to believe what actually happened! I was expecting her to call me right back, but instead, she just replied with, I bet you I will believe it. Huh? 
We arrived at my house, and my parents rushed out to me and hugged me tightly. It turns out, they figured out that Gabby was an imposter pretty quickly. But she's still enjoying this farming life so much that she decided to hang around a bit more before telling me. Sorry, Nancy, but it didn't take long for Mom and Dad to notice how her daughter suddenly doesn't know how to fry an egg anymore. Then everybody laughed. We all squeezed around the kitchen table and caught up on everything. Oh boy, it got emotional again. I think we all cried enough tears to fill a lake. It was so good to see my parents again. Even though they weren't my biological parents, they loved and cared for me, despite all the money struggles. Now that we're reunited, I've officially moved back in the city with Gabby, and we now go to school together. We still come out to the countryside every weekend and spend some quality time with my adoptive parents, who, turns out, Gabby loves just as much as I do. And thanks to my biological parents, they now have the bountiful ranch they always dreamed of. It all fell into place in the end, and I couldn't be happier. Except for the little awkward moments with Jaden. <laughs> Thinking back about that, it was so dumb. Maybe I'll help Katie properly this time. As, to be honest, they'd make a pretty cute couple. But she better set me up with another cute guy in return. Sarah, it's about time you got married. What are you talking about? Get married? Not a chance. I'm still in school. Oh, give me a break. Marrying a rich guy will bring you more money than school ever will. Mom, I'm not like you. I actually like school. Now leave me alone. That was the conversation between my mom and I about two months ago. Well, look at me now. Here I am staying in one of the most luxurious villas in Boston. My name's Sarah, by the way, and I'm 16 and in high school. My life hasn't ever been normal. For starters, I don't have a dad, and my mom is totally irresponsible, choosing to spend any money we have on partying and men. Of course, she doesn't even have a job, so we rely on her latest fling to help support us. <sighs> my mom has never really cared about me, so I just stay out of her life as well. She can do what she wants as long as I can do what I want. And what I want is to study really hard so that I can have a better life than hers. But as usual, she intervened in that plan, and two months ago she forced me to quit high school and get married. Obviously, I refused, and I even went on a hunger strike for a few days. But then one day she said, Tomorrow, our two families will meet. If you don't rock up, I'll go to your school and tell them you're not coming back. But if you come, you can still go to school. At least until the wedding. Ugh. School. She's using what I love most against me, again, to force me to follow all of her ridiculous plans. Fine. I agreed. I mean, it was just a meetup. It's not like they could pressure me to get married right away, right? So the next day, I followed my mom to go meet Adam's family. I was shocked when I saw him. He was wearing a mask that covered half of his face, and he just sat there, not uttering a word, just staring at me without even blinking. Honestly, it was so creepy. His parents seemed nice, though, and they explained that he'd been in an accident when he was a kid, which had left him with a severe burn scar on his face. So he wore the mask to avoid scaring people off. I could see him watching me, waiting for my reaction. So I tried to smile back. I felt so bad for him. But at the same time, there was no way I wanted to spend my life with this guy. So I decided to put my plan into action. All I had to do was get his parents to disagree with the arrangement so I acted as clumsy as possible. I wanted to give the worst first impression ever. As soon as the wine was poured, I leaned over and knocked his mom's glass all over her white dress. My mom looked mortified, but I didn't stop there. I ate with my hands and dropped food all over the table and kept chewing with my mouth wide open. But no matter how hard I tried, Adam's parents still seemed to like me, and I could see him slightly smirking at me. What did a girl have to do to put this family off? Clearly, they were desperate. Near the end of the meal, they started discussing the engagement. Apparently, I'd move into Adam's family house so we could get to know each other. Then, if I could help Adam to feel less insecure, they'd let me finish high school before we had to get married. Um, so didn't that mean they just wanted a friend for Adam? Someone to keep him company? Hmm, it's not that bad. I guess I can do that then. So after the engagement, I moved into Adam's mansion. 
After school every day, I'd hang out with him and try to cheer him up. I'd play him my fave music, show him some epic movies, even try telling him jokes. But still, he barely smiled. He wasn't interested in anything I liked. Then one day I was struggling with my science homework when he passed by and decided to check out what I was doing. Suddenly he started chatting away, and I realized how much he loved chemistry and physics. He even offered to help me with my assignments. He was so passionate about those subjects, and this was a win-win, because I'd finally found something we could discuss. He even started opening up to me. It was a start. I began to feel more comfortable around him. On one sunny day, I even asked Adam if he wanted to play a game of badminton. At first he refused, as he didn't like being outside, but I wouldn't stop begging until he said, Fine. Have you played this game before? No. Okay, then let me show you. I was so excited to teach Adam. Although I'm not great at hand-eye coordination, I'd been playing badminton a lot at school, so I felt pretty confident. Finally, I'd found something I was better at than him. Ha! Huh. Okay, so I spoke too soon. After a few missed serves, he somehow mastered the shuttlecock and kicked my ass. <sighs> Why did you say you have never played this before? Because it's the truth. I, I don't believe you. Adam just shrugged and then left me lying on the ground. He had to be bluffing. It's impossible for anyone to be that good the first time they do something. Ugh. But it was fun, I guess. Adam was growing on me, but I couldn't be around him 24-7 as I had classes to attend. And no cap, I was extremely happy that I still got to go to school. Plus, at school something incredible happened. One day I was walking through the schoolyard when I tripped over a can. Just as I was about to faceplant on the ground, a hand appeared and pulled me back up. We made eye contact and I swear it was love at first sight. His name was Brian and he's super handsome. From that moment on, we texted nonstop every day, and it wasn't long before he asked me to be his girlfriend, and of course I said yes. I was smitten, but I obviously had to hide it from Adam and his parents. One night, I was on the phone with Brian when suddenly a text from my mom arrived. In fact, ever since the engagement, she hadn't even been in touch. Maybe she was too busy spending the huge amount of money that Adam's parents had given her. Sarah, I really need some cash, just around $500. Can you please ask Adam if he can lend me it? What? How have you already spent the money his parents gave you? Stop asking questions. Just get me that money, okay? Ugh, money, money, money. All she cared about was money. She didn't even ask if I was okay. Um, um, I, I want to ask. Can, can you get me some money? Money? For what? Um, I, I, I need to pay for my tutoring class. I haven't had money to pay for the past few months. Hmm, how much do you need? Um, about $500. Okay, I'll tell the butler he'll give it to you later. Phew, that was easier than I thought. Uh, but Adam didn't ask twice about it. Was it because that amounts just nothing to a rich guy like him? Anyway, at least he'd said yes. That would shut my mom up for a bit. If only... A few days later, she texted me again. This time she wanted $3,000. Was she kidding me? Uh, I just ignored her. But she kept bombarding me with texts and calls. It went on for days. She wouldn't leave me alone. I didn't give in, though. Until this photo was sent to my phone. It was of me and Brian holding hands and clearly in love. Turns out my mom had been so desperate for the money, she'd turned up at my school one day to talk face to face and that's when she saw us together. She then threatened me and said that if I didn't get her the money, she'd tell Adam's family what I was up to. This terrified me, because then I'd have nowhere to go, and I wouldn't be able to go to school anymore. I couldn't let that happen. I had no other choice but to keep asking Adam for the money with my lame excuses. From buying books, to a relative who was ill and needed treatment, you name it, I'd use it. Every time I asked Adam, he looked at me like he was worried about me and asked if I was okay. This made me feel even more guilty, because it seemed like he genuinely cared about me. To make up for it, I'd bake him cookies and even knit a cute sweater for him as a birthday gift. But then, a few weeks later, he asked if we could talk. As soon as I walked into his room, he threw a bunch of photos at me. They were all of me and Brian. I couldn't believe it. Did my mother betray me? But that's not the case. 
He told me how he'd had someone follow me because he felt I'd been acting weird. Not only had he discovered I was dating someone, he'd also found out that I'd been lying about the money and giving it to my mom. He was so disappointed in me. Please leave me alone. I don't want to see you anymore. I was so worried I'd be kicked out of their house, but no one mentioned anything. His parents still chatted to me at dinner, and they seemed happy enough. Only Adam avoided me, which of course made me feel terrible. The only one I had to lean on right now was my sweet Brian. So after dinner one night, I decided to go over to his place. I really needed some comfort right now. But when I arrived outside, through the window, I saw another girl in his room. They started kissing. And I thought I was going to be sick. In a panic, I quickly crawled over and hid below his window to listen in. But aren't you a bit too close with that Sarah girl lately? Don't you dare. Don't worry, Pumpkin. It was all just for you. I noticed that she lives in a big mansion, with personal drivers and all. Her family must be filthy rich. So, I just wanted to be a good friend and help them spend those money. You know, and maybe that way, I could get you the new Chanel handbag that you always want. Oh, really, honey? So, how's it going? Well, a dud. Seems like she's the stingy kind of rich girl. Ugh, keeping every single nickel all to herself. How was I supposed to believe what I'd just heard? My heart was shattered into pieces, and I couldn't hold it in anymore. I stood up and put my face against the window. You're dumped! Brian looked so shocked to see me there, but I didn't wait to see if he had anything to say. I just ran home in tears and locked myself in my room. Sarah, open the door. Do you know how many days you haven't eaten for? Sarah, open the door. If not, I will send someone to break the door down. Oh, God, are, are you okay? What's going on? Nothing. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for lying to you all this time. I, I didn't mean to. Suddenly, Adam hugged me and said, It's okay. Don't cry. Now can you just tell me what happened? In tears, I told Adam the whole story. From being used by my mother to being betrayed by Brian. Perhaps this is what I deserve for lying to you. Actually, if I were you, I wouldn't want to marry someone like me anyway. You're a great guy. As long as you have confidence in yourself and live with a more positive attitude, good things will happen to you, I promise. Even with this ugly face? I looked up at Adam and, oh my gosh, the burn scar on his face. It was worse than I thought it would be. I reached out to touch it. It must have been so painful. C can we, can, can we start over? Keep helping me, okay? I looked at Adam, smiled and nodded. So after that day, I continued to stay at Adam's house and help him get out of the isolated, self-deprecating life he'd been living. Gradually, his attitude improved, and he even started taking a business course to get ready for taking over his family's company in the future. I also encouraged him to start taking off his mask. Love everything about yourself, including that scar. As for my mom, she's currently being detained for her illegal gambling. Yep, that's what she spent all of that money on. She'll probably end up in prison, and even though this isn't what I want for her, she kind of deserves it. Oh, and about the wedding, we postponed it. Lucky for me, both Adam and his parents want me to go to college first and pursue my dreams. Once I graduate, we'll probably start planning our wedding, though, and it'll be truly out of love this time. <laughs> Hey, I'm Callie. I'm almost 16, but I could live in peace only in the first two years of my child's life, until my little brother, Ethan, came along and ruined everything. I always hoped that that little brat had never been born, and if you're the oldest sibling like I am, then chances are you'll feel the same way as I do. Firstly, his birth meant that my parents barely noticed me anymore. Yeah, I know I was two back then, so I don't actually remember this, but as the years passed by, I saw how it was. I got into trouble for dumb things because I was the oldest, while Ethan got away with everything because he was too young to understand. Ugh, I really hate my brother. And I could tell tons of reasons for that. 
We always fought over the last slice of pizza. When he got it, he'd eat it open-mouthed in front of me. And mom would smile and say, Ah, my growing boy. But when I got it, mom would frown at me and say, Callie, don't be greedy. Ugh! He'd sneak into my room and took the plushy bunny my bestie gave me and super glued its ears together. So I took his switch and hid it in the basement. It took him an entire week to find it. Ha! <laughs> in revenge, he smeared chocolate over the back of my pants. I only realized what was going on when other kids started laughing and pointing at me. I had to wear my sweater tied around my waist for the rest of the day, even though it was freezing. So I retaliated by rubbing stinging nettles on his pillow. The next morning, his face was bright red and he couldn't stop itching. It was so funny. It was also a photo shoot day. So much to his protests, a makeup artist spent ages applying makeup on him to cover up the redness. He looked so ridiculous. <laughs> you see, my dad's a politician, so sometimes we have to appear in photo shoots where we look like a loving, harmonious family. Pfft. As if. I could play pretend for the cameras, but in reality, I really just wanted to kick my brother's butt. We just didn't get on at all. He's such a brat. So I guess pranking each other was our coping strategy. I mean, hey. It isn't easy living with someone you hate. Our pranks happen so often that our parents just let us get on with it. However, there is one thing Ethan is terrified of. It all started back when he was eight, and Dad was watching The Walking Dead. Me and Ethan walked into the room just as there was a zoom-in scene in which a zombie was having a feeding frenzy. Being the brave girl, I thought it was interesting and sat down and watched it with Dad. But my bro, being the wuss, he screamed, then ran out of the room hid under our parents' bed, burst into tears, and refused to move for two hours because he was convinced that at the sight of that zombie, he knew he must be chosen, and zombies were going out to get him. Got a Achilles heel. So not long after that, when he dropped my brand new headphones down the toilet, which made me have to put my hand in to pick it up, I decided to get revenge on him. And luckily for me, Halloween was just around the corner. Perfect. I binge-watched makeup tutorials on YouTube and practiced on my friends. Then on Halloween, I turned myself into a seriously scary zombie, hid the video camera in his room, got into his closet, and made grumbling and moaning sounds. When he opened the closet door, I jumped out at him and tackled him to the floor. OMG! He screamed so loudly and he actually peed his pants. And now... All these years later, I still have it on video to torment him with. Ha! But don't be fooled, as my brother was not your average kitty. It wasn't that long ago that he played a prank on me, which made me madder than Misty from Pokemon. So, I had a crush on this boy from school. He was just so sweet and dreamy, and from the cute glances he kept on giving me, I was 100% sure he liked me too. Valentine's Day seemed like the perfect day to express my feelings toward him. So I stayed up until midnight the night before, making chocolate for him. I left my chocolates lovingly wrapped and boxed on the side in the kitchen and went to bed. The next day, I grabbed the box and at lunchtime, I handed it to my crush. To my utter dismay when he opened it, instead of the lovely heart-shaped chocolates I'd spent hours making, there were embarrassing childhood pics of me, including a photo from when I was 12 with a bunch of hideous pimples on my face. One of me as a toddler sleeping with my mouth open and saliva drool on my chin. And one of me as a baby with a bowl of food mush on my head. Then my crush lifted up a note saying, Great chocolate, sis. That sneaky brat. Although my crush kept saying that I looked really cute in those photos and he liked them even more than chocolates, I still wanted to give that brat a hard punch right in his annoying face. Oh God, I'm begging you, please take him away from me. I'll be good. I'll do my homework on time, and I'll stop borrowing mom's expensive perfume. Okay, so this may have been my wish, but I never expected that it would come true. It was a normal evening around the dinner table. Ethan was glued to his phone, and mom got really annoyed and made him clear up the table. While he was doing that, I saw a message pop up on his phone from someone called Sophie, saying, Okay, I'll see you in the front of the cinema at 8 p.m. I'm looking forward to it, smiley face. What? Ethan had a date? Oh. My sweet little bro, it was payback time for ruining my crush's chocolates. So I stealthily followed Ethan to the cinema. Because the cinema was pretty close to our home, we both walked. He cut through the park. Jeez, it was creepy at this time. 
I swear the trees looked like monsters. Anyway, I saw something light up by my feet. I picked it up. It was Ethan's phone. What an idiot. I was so going to make him work hard to get this back. As I walked out of the park, I saw a black van parked nearby. Suddenly, I heard a scream and saw two giant men trying to drag Ethan toward the back of the van. Ethan was crying and struggling with fierce resistance, but my weak, skinny 14-year-old brother was no rival for those two men. What? How dare they try and kidnap my brother? He might have been the most annoying human on the planet, but he was my annoying little brother. There's no way I was letting this happen. I rushed forward and shouted, Ethan, zombie mode on! My presence startled the two kidnappers, and this made them more intent on dragging him toward the van. When all of a sudden, Ethan bit down hard into the hand of the man who was covering his mouth, just like how zombies always do. Good one, bro. The man wept out and shook his hand. The other man pulled on Ethan's arm, but he managed to scramble to his feet. As the man tried to push him into the van, Ethan sought his opportunity and kicked him right between his legs. Ouch. While this was going on, I called the cops and told them to be quick. Then I saw the jerk with the bitten hand about to grab Ethan again. So I screamed out loud, Ethan, run! He sprinted off into the park and the bitten man followed him. It was exactly a real-life zombie chase. Huh. Suddenly, I felt arms grab me around the waist. Oh no, it was the other guy. He said, I guess you'll have to go too, before he lifted me up and carried me over to the back of the van. I screamed out and tried hitting and kicking out, but he was too strong. He threw me into the back of the van before he could get in. I smashed the van door and quickly locked the door from the inside to knock him out. Lucky for me, not him, but the guy chasing Ethan was the one who was keeping the key. It was so scary when the kidnapper kept shouting at me outside, but I was even more frightened thinking Ethan could get hurt somewhere out there. Then suddenly I heard his voice. Hey, stop. Did he get caught? I looked out to see the contrary. He was running towards me after two police officials. They were holding their guns to control the guy standing by the van. Ethan was safe and came back for me. I opened the door and jumped into his arms. Oh, let's skip this part. I get goosebumps every time I recall this weepy situation. Me and Ethan followed the cops and saw the other kidnapper handcuffed to a tree, fighting with mosquitoes with his one free arm in the dark. The police told me that during the way heading to the van, Ethan kept on complaining about how slow and unprofessional they were, as they should come to save me first instead. My boy still stubbornly said, I could run myself, but this wimp couldn't. The idiot definitely couldn't have imagined that he has a Wonder Woman big sister like me. <laughs> Our parents rushed into the police department to see us. And yep, weepy part again. Turned out my dad's rival had hired the guy to kidnap Ethan so that they could use him to blackmail my dad. I don't clearly understand the whole situation. Maybe after this I'll watch more political movies. But now, thanks God, we're safe. I may have wished my brother would disappear, but when I actually could have lost him forever, well, I have to admit that it really freaked me out. And it turns out, he felt the same way about me too. Crazy, huh? Of course, we still play pranks on each other. We wouldn't be us if we didn't. But I realized something. He might be the most annoying brat ever, but he's still my family. And I love my family so much. However, I'm pretty sure there'll still be times when I hate my annoying little bro. Like right now. While I'm sitting in my room telling you my story, I'm sure I can hear him giggling outside of my door. What's the betting I open it and end up with a bucket of cold water on my head or something? All this may because I have told my mom he has a girlfriend. Tough luck, little bro. There's no way you're getting the better of this pranking queen. Hey! I've been trying to find you at school today. I have... Big news, and it's bad. Real bad! Don't leave me hanging! Mom says we're defo moving to California by the end of the month! What? No way! That's a two-day drive from here! Yeah, I know! <sighs> but Mom's marrying David. The same David that's scared of spiders, cockroaches, and everything? Yeah, that guy. He's been trying to get her attention for ages. Sending her flowers, playing the guitar on her porch. Then last week, he even climbed up the oak tree so he could hand her flowers through the bedroom window. Okay, that's kind of creepy. Ew. 
tell me about it. But you know, the worst part is, I have to transfer to another school. No, no, no. Lisa couldn't move away. Who would I sit with at lunch? Who would I watch corny movies with? Ugh, we've been besties for years. We couldn't just be separated like this. No one would ever understand me like she did. We were like two halves of a whole. Her dad had passed away, so she only had her mom, while I only had my dad. And yep, that's my amazing dad. It's been just me and him for the past 10 years. I still remember that afternoon when my mom took her suitcase and left with another man. After that, me and dad moved back here, to our hometown, New Hampshire. It's only when I got a little older that I found out mom and her lover scammed dad out of everything. So dad's been working his butt off to open his own repair garage to provide for us both ever since. It isn't fair. My dad's a hero, and he deserves to be with a better woman. Hold on. Yes, he deserves a better one. And who wouldn't be better than Lisa's mom? I needed to tell Lisa about my plan right now. So I immediately ran to my room and phoned her. Girl, I have the most genius plan ever to keep you and your mom here with me. Please, I'm all ears. Anything. I really don't want to move to Cali. Okay, listen. Let's set your mom up with my dad. He's a good guy. And that means we'll be sisters. We both squealed excitedly. Lisa always wanted to have a dad. A nice one. Not that David creep. Ugh. I could see the envy in her eyes when I spoke about the funny pranks I played on my dad. Well, in contrast, my heart ached whenever she told me about the girly pamper days she had with her mom. <sighs> okay, first, research is important. We spent all night looking up their horoscopes, name astrology calculator, and even physiognomy. Whoa, they're a 98% match! But hey, nothing is perfect, right? Me and Lisa would make up for the missing 2%. The next day, we were both zombies due to the lack of sleep. But at least a proper plan had been set. I told Lisa to tell her mom, Mary, to come around on Saturday for my birthday. Um, yeah, it's not actually my birthday. But she's a presenter for a big news channel, so she's super busy. We needed to make up some special occasion so she couldn't say no. Then I told my dad to prepare his signature dish to welcome my special guests. There's no way Mary could resist. That day, I was helping dad with the ingredients when I heard the doorbell. I opened the door to see Lisa standing there with a pink frosted birthday cake. And by her side was her mom. Happy birthday, sweetie. This one's for you. Oh, something smells good. Hmm, and so familiar. She continued. Hello? Mary? Jack? Why are you here? For Aaron's birthday. And you? I'm her father. And FYI, today isn't her birthday. Yeah, jerk. Mary said under her breath while rolling her eyes. Excuse me? You dumped me for no reason, so what's that attitude? Oh, really? For no reason? My eyes darted from Dad to Mary. Huh? Why were they yelling at each other? This was very confusing, but I could guess that they used to date? OMG, what a small world! Okay, whatever, cause it's lunchtime now. And wow, Dad's legendary meatloaf smelled amazeballs. We sat down. And Mary glared at Dad as she took a bite of food. Then she blurted out, Oh, wow. I guess some things never change, huh? Your food is still super salty. Oh, really? But as I recall, someone still asked for seconds. Unbelievable. Excuse me, but do you know each other? Lisa innocently interrupted. There was an awkward silence. Then Dad said, Yeah, we do. But this is the first time I've seen Mary since we broke up, right after I visited her studio for the first time. Mary looked flustered as she replied, Lisa, you shouldn't have tricked me into coming here. Finish your food, then we're leaving. On hearing this, Dad ordered Lisa and me up to my room so he could talk to Mary in private. Only, we hid behind the couch and listened in. Turns out, on that day, 
Mary took my dad to the studio to watch her first filming as a news presenter. After that, she'd passed by the waiting room and overheard dad talking to someone. I clearly heard that person ask you how I looked, and you said I was still the same old Mary. Do you have any idea that I spent two hours in makeup and was excited to show you? Dad tried to chime in, but Mary wouldn't give him a sec. We're still. Later, you even told them you were over the moon I wouldn't be your girlfriend for much longer. Thus, to intercept that, I had to break up with you first. Oh, my. So my dad was a playboy or something? Lisa and I swapped confused looks, then continued watching the show. My dad was dumbfounded, and then he said in a helpless voice, Oh, Mary. Things were not like that. I said that you look the same because you're always as beautiful as the day I met you. And about the other thing... Yeah? Um, I prepared a ring to propose to you so you'd no longer be my girlfriend, but my wife. What? So they broke up because of an absurd misunderstanding and lost contact since then. Jeez. I thought adults were meant to know what they were doing. It sure didn't seem like it at times. Mary gave Dad an awkward smile, and they said that they could be friends. Then she told him about David and how she was marrying him on the 22nd of December. No! We couldn't let this happen. There had to be another way of getting them together. But that road was full of thorns and spikes, especially when Dad dropped a bombshell. His new girlfriend, Lucy. A few days later, when I was working on my art project, Dad walked into the room with her. Excuse me? She was wearing this super tight bodycon dress and had at least seven layers of makeup on. Ugh. Then she even dared to pick up the photo of me with Mom and smirked. Oh, how nice. I rushed over to her, snatched it out of her hands and shouted, Keep off my things! I don't like you! She immediately glared at me, but then seeing Dad coming down from upstairs, she suddenly smiled and hugged me while whispering in my ear, You don't, but you have to. Jeez, what a poisonous snake. But worse, when she left, Dad had this dumb grin on his face, and then he actually asked if I wanted her to be my new mom. Oh no, she'd hypnotized him for sure. In a rush, I called Lisa to tell her about it. She came up with the idea of asking her mom to join us at the Christmas market this week. Bummer. She refused. Apparently, she had too much wedding planning to do. Ugh. And if you're thinking it couldn't get worse, then Dad invited Lucy along. So, Lisa asked her mom to let her stay with me for a few days, so we could teach this Lucy some lessons. May the pranking commence. That morning, Lucy showed up in this fancy light blue dress and ordered Dad to get her a chocolate-covered waffle. What a shame. I accidentally knocked it all over her outfit. Oops! Then a fake fly somehow fell into her hot chocolate. Her eyes almost bulged out of her head when she drank that. <laughs> but she just gave us a cunning smirk, then grabbed Dad's arm and cuddled close to him. Unbelievable! But you know... Diamond cuts diamond. When Dad went to the restroom, with sparkling eyes, I said, Lucy, I really admire a nice person like you. My dad's only a mechanic with $1,500 a month, but you still love him. Um, so this isn't true. He ran his own business. But anyway... No way! He looks rich, though. Oh, he probably was just desperate to catch your attention. He bragged a little bit. And you're proud of that? That's not funny, sweetie. I am out of your dad's league. There's no way I'm putting up with a brat like you for such a poor man. Right at that moment, my dad returned and, no surprises, they broke up. Now she was out of the picture, dad was free to win Mary over, right? We three went home, and I noticed that dad was acting weird. He kept on pacing by the door. Then, when Mary arrived to pick Lisa up, he leapt to open it and blurted out to her, Have you thought any more about... us? She didn't say anything, but I noticed them exchanging these sorry looks. Their love for each other was so obviously real. 
as they knew each other since they had nothing. <sighs> Yet they weren't doing anything about it. It was already December 20th, meaning there were only two days left till the wedding day. I couldn't let our plan fail like this. I immediately grabbed my phone to call Lisa, but the ringing was next to me. She left her phone at my house. Dang! Then the next morning, I walked by her house to go to school as usual. But no one was home, and she wasn't at school either. Oh my, had they moved to David's already? I told Dad this right away when I got home. He thought for a second and asked me to get in the car ASAP to go to California. So our bumper two-day road trip began. When we reached the wedding venue, it was empty. Oh no, we were too late. Dad looked devastated, so I put my arm around him and started to lead him out of there. But then the receptionist appeared and said, Oh, didn't they let you know either? The wedding's been cancelled. Dad's face lit up, and we both raced over to the car and started the long drive back. Oh, it felt like ages in the car, and now it was just two hours until Christmas Eve. The roads were full of beautiful Christmas decorations. I looked through the windows and saw people gathering with their families, while Dad and I were driving nonstop. How sad. We drove straight to Lisa and Mary's, but they were out, so we sat in the freezing cold on their doorstep and waited. Dad dozed off, his head resting on my shoulder. Bless. Then I saw them walking towards us. Oh man, you should have seen their shocked faces. <laughs> I shook Dad awake, and he looked over at Mary. She dropped her bags and looked at us astonished. Then Lisa told us the whole story. Turns out, on the way to California, they met two amateur robbers who forced them to get out of the car. Mary immediately pounded them with her handbag, while David ran off and hid behind a tree. With Lisa! When the robbers scampered off, Mary told David everything from the bottom of her heart that although David was wealthy, that was not what she wanted. Instead, she just needed a man who could support and protect her. She'd been flattered by his gestures of love, touched by his persistence, and thought that love could be cultivated. But things weren't as simple as that. So they broke up, and the wedding was cancelled. Dad and I were stunned. Then, with eyes prickled with tears, my dad said, Mary, I'm sorry for letting you go. But it's not too late, is it? Right after, he pulled the old ring from that day out of his pocket and got down on one knee and said, Mary, will you marry me? She cried out, Yes! Both Lisa and I were bursting with happiness. So now we both have a mom and a dad, and we're pretty much sisters. Yay! This is the warmest Christmas ever.